okay, this gig is coming up. They're gonna introduce us. So I literally looked at my shorts and my shorts, the brand name was Opihi. I wasn't wearing Gucci or Prada or nothing. <laughs> it was just Opihi. And at the time had four ukuleles. So I was like, how about Opihi? We all picked the ukulele. OPE pickers. Mm. Before Roman from Koloe Kaidos, Imua Garza from OPE pickers. <laughs> Man, there, there were some wild times where I'd like, we'd walk in the mall and pe people like following us, hiding behind like <laughs> the appliances. And then like I go go up to them. Ooh. <laughs> I, I think my, my, my phrasing that I say nowadays is like, I guess growing up I used to be a heartthrob, but now my heart just throbs. <laughs> Never get that check. Um, Delina Mai Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by picking opihis. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you might be thinking that's a super random thing to say, but it makes sense if you keep on listening. We have another amazing guest today, but before we introduce him, I got to remind you to check out keepitaloha.com to buy some KIA merch. Use code KEEPITALOHA to get 10% off. If supporting us with money is not possible for you, but you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I read every single one, and to prove it, I want to share this review from M. Miyashima. This person says, Mahalo, absolutely love this podcast and the awesome guest. Well, Mahalo M. Miyashima, we love you. Okay, speaking of awesome guests, let's introduce ours for today. This podcast comes from Texaco in Hawaii, which features 58 convenient locations across the state. Fueling up at Texaco is fast and easy when you use the Texaco mobile app to pay at the pump. The Texaco mobile app is a contactless way to pay for fuel so you can get in and out of the gas station quickly. Fuel your car and fuel yourself. Pick up your favorite local snacks and ice cold drinks at your neighborhood Texaco today. Texaco at Tecron. Driving performance. Our guest today is a Grammy Award nominated producer from the island of Oahu. This husband and father of three is also a vocalist, musician, recording engineer, and composer. His first official professional music release was around the age of 11. He then went on to record and perform with the ukulele group OP Pickers legends in 2020 he was nominated for his first grammy award for a record titled hawaiian lullaby released by haku records he has grown his skills and experiences to become an expert musical arranger sing and singer who has appeared on hundreds of songs and has worked with many musical artists including past podcast guest and grammy winner kalani pea jake shimo bukuro kimye the green maoli jack johnson Kachafaya, and many more this talented brada also created Zio Music with his wife, a, a production company and record label based in Honolulu, Hawaii. I am so stoked to talk stories with him today. His name is Imua Garza. Aloha, Imua. Welcome to the Keep Aloha podcast. How are you doing? Aloha. I'm great. What is that? Wikipedia. Uh, half Wikipedia, half, I think, uh, zeoworship.com. Yeah, um, just all over. I like it. One, one quarter, uh, my own touch. <laughs> The Brada and the OP Picker stuff was was Kamaka. <laughs> yeah. And now I get to put the uh, Keep It Aloha podcast on that Wikipedia oh, page nice. as well. Oh, nice. Yes. Too. So mahalo you, for having me. Of course. No, it's such an honor to have you. I was talking with Ozzy before you got here. We're like, what era was the OP Pickers? Were we like elementary, middle school, high school? So we're thinking about that. And I think it was when we were elementary, middle, then beginning high school. I think that's... That's what it was. Yeah, we, I get that line a lot. Oh, my mom loves you. <laughs> she's uh, she's like 50, but, <laughs> but she, she grew up to you guys. Yeah. See, the thing that oh, I... my grandma. My grandma loves you guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys were one of the hottest bands back in Well, in it, was, it was the time where there was no social media. That mm -hmm. didn't exist. So to really get the word out was... Um, Literally just going and playing gigs and someone mm -hmm. sees word of mouth. That's that's really how it happened. But um started music really young. I was actually was nine when I first started. My mom's a musician and I really wanted to uh learn music. I I seen when she would play music, all the joy that people would have. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I wanna capture that and just from my mom when I would wake up in the morning, she'd have uh there's like a little organ at our house mm -hmm. and she'd sing um it's time to get up. It's time to get up in the morning. <laughs> what a sweet way to wake up every morning. It's like a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, hello, mom. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, there was an ukulele in the cupboard. And uh, yeah, music has always been a part of my life. And I really got inspired um, just by playing. We, we used to have a lot of Hawaiian jams mm -hmm. at the house. And my uncles would play. We'd have, there would be like 20 guitars, ukulele, bay. It was just like big kind of kapila session. Mm -hmm. Hula dancers would come wow. maybe once every three months. That would happen like most of my life growing up. And so I'd always love, while everyone else was playing football, all the brothers was doing fire knife outside. <laughs> I'm like, I want to learn this. Yeah, yeah. And I want to, I want to, um, kani ka ukulele. <laughs> and, and just learn. So I think I, I've always had that, um, growing up that I, mm. I just want to learn. Okay. What, what is the next instrument? What's the next thing mm. I could, I could get better at yeah. and, um, constantly chip away at, you know, being disciplined to, um, sit at a piano for hours a day. I would fall asleep with my ukulele. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just wow. always, I always had music around me. You were, you were putting in those 10,000 hours <laughs> at a very young age. I was, yeah. yes. But, but I, I gotta, I gotta ask my, my questions yes. um, that we always start the podcast off. you you already um, kind of answered the last one, but where are you from? Where are you grad? And what was it like growing up? I'm going to start with uh, where I grad, because that's always a popular mm -hmm. one. Kamehameha. I went great Kamehameha. Imua. Yeah. I wasn't a football no player. Pun. I was in the orchestra. <laughs> Ork Ork. And Song Contest Lee. Leader. Um, yeah, I was I was uh, nominated for Song Contest oh, okay. Leader. But I was like, nah, it's like it's like chill. So <laughs> um, I am from Pearl City. Mm -hmm. And when my when I was one, so I was born here at Castle, Kailua side. Oh, four four. And then when I turned one, the next day. My dad was in the military and my dad also is a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. So he's going to chiropractic college and military at the same time. And so we moved to Texas hmm. or Tejas, as they say. Um, but that was after, sorry, let me, let me rewind. After, the first time we moved to Utah for six years. Mm -hmm. And so my whole um, one through six was was in Utah, in Salt Lake. And then every summer we'd come back though. We'd come home, we'd stay at um, my tutu's house in Papakalea, and then we'd stay at in Pearl City where my, my grandma also lives too. Yeah, which is not far from Salt Lake. Not too far from Salt Lake, yeah. <laughs> and so, <Super> Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we went to Texas for three years. Okay. So I was um, probably about seven till 10. And then fourth grade time after Christmas break, we moved back to Hawaii, where, mm. where we call home. It's so funny because my brother would, um, my brother's uh, two years older than me mm -hmm. and my sister. And my sister kind of looks like J-Lo and, and then they were getting really into the, um, the Hispanic culture there. Mm. And then my brother was like, he's, he's brown, but he, he had like a Texas draw when he came back. <laughs> so he's like, howdy partner. <laughs> he kind of <laughs> talked like that a little bit. And then now, because if you know him, it's, it's really funny because he's, it's kind of hard for him to turn off the mok, the mok yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. He code switches really well. That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, but we we adapt where yeah. we at, and so we're back in Hawaii. We we uh, gotta throw the pitch the pigeon back yeah, in. Yeah, that's how. Yeah. So from fourth grade on, um, basically, grew up in Pearl City side, yeah, okay, Central side. Even when you were living in Utah and Texas, um, you were still jamming and. You had Kani Kapila sessions? Yeah, but or? there wasn't really any training on like ukulele. So mm -hmm. I just knew a couple basic chords. Mm -hmm. And then when I first came here, I uh, wanted to take lessons. So I, I usually the parents ask the kid, mm -hmm. hey, I, I, wanna, I want you to learn this. I want you to learn that. Mm -hmm. But um, my parents were so, uh, they, they saw the spark in me of wanting to learn, mm -hmm. wanting to get better. Um, and even at a young age, because it's like, oh, um, my mom would play something on the piano. And then I would play the same thing after. And then so she's like, there's something on this kid. Like he just, mm -hmm. he loves it. And I could tell we should cultivate that. And so my parents were very supportive growing up. And um, at a young age, I think I was nine when I first started like really learning. And then um, I, I went to Roisakumo ukulele studio. Oh, okay. And I learned first in group lessons. And um, I really took to the ukulele for a while, which is mm -hmm. a lot of OP pickers is yeah. pretty ukulele driven, which I think that's what made us a little bit different. But at the time it was like Kiaivai, Pure Heart, oh, Kopena. Yeah. So like ukulele was pretty um, the forefront mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, the music during that time. And I'd come home from um, 
like learning all the what 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 band does every ukulele player have to learn first? Ka'au Creator Boys. <laughs> and so me growing up, I'm like, Ka'au Creator Boys all day. And then I learned the solo, I learned the chords. I'd um I'd I'd make it a point to basically learn every single song. I said, one day I'm gonna meet I'm gonna meet um Ernie Cruz and I'm gonna meet Trey Fernandez and I ended up marrying Ernie Cruz's sister. <laughs> <laughs> Quick story. So I, I yeah. was I was like nine and and in the beginning of learning ukulele and I wrote a little a little book in school and it was like what do you want to be when you grow up and like what do you want to do and so at the very end it's like the about the author it's like um, when I grow up I want to meet Ernie Cruz Jr. <laughs> And then, and when then I married the sister. <laughs> did you meet him before that though? Or was it sister and then Ernie? I actually knew Ernie before I knew oh, okay. um, my wife because we ended up doing a gig together in Japan. It was with Kyle Creative Boys. And then my brother and I, we were um, like a little ukulele and he did guitar. And so Royce Akuma was like, hey, we're going to Japan. We're doing this little tour. And I was still young, like um, maybe, I don't know, 14 or something. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up going to Japan and um, getting to meet Ernie. And he gave me his CD before the CD was even released. Oh, and so cool. I was like, oh, I feel so honored. And then I, I memorized that whole album before the album was even released. And um, yeah, I just, I just loved it. I just love being around music. And then one day, um, OP Pickers, we had our CD release party for our album called Beginnings. And that was at Windward Mall. Mm -hmm. And then um, we asked if Kyle Creative Boys could be a part of the show just the release party. And so he's like, oh, absolutely. So they, they came and then he called Tiff and said, hey, Tiff, uh, I'll go play with this band. They're like, they're called OP Pickers. They're coming out with a new album. And well, you like come with me? Just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have met your husband earlier. Wow, yeah. You waited yeah. <laughs> extra long. Yeah, well, so how, was... how long after did you meet? Oh, let's see. Well, that was 2001. And so... We got married in 2006. We were only dating for uh, six months, engaged for four months. What? So it was pretty quick. So about 2004. And how long 2005. have you been together? So Next month, we're going to be 18 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Three kids later, 16, 12, and When nine. you know, you know. Yeah. How did you know? Oh, I just... My heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually... Knew my, the... Because you're pretty young. And like, I was 21. 21, yeah. I got married, yeah. So for those of you who are doing the math, I'm turning 40 yeah. next month. Yeah, you, you, well, you, you're still very youthful, yeah. though. And you started so young. So like you've been in the industry so long, so it sounds like you're older, but you're only Yeah, four, I mean, I, 30, 40, I, I started very young. I, mm -hmm. I, I knew. I was in the middle of like doing, um, because I, I did have, you know, a couple girlfriends before mm -hmm. that just like two and didn't work out just, it, it lasted very short and I said you know I'm not just gonna date to date anymore mm -hmm. next girl I'm gonna date I'm gonna know that I'm gonna marry <laughs> so I'm not, yeah so I'm not even gonna like play around I'm just gonna be like yeah. okay next person I say would you be my girlfriend I'm gonna marry mm -hmm. and I told my best friend that wow and then um so when I asked her like I already knew I'm like we were friends for like a year actually before we even oh, okay so that yeah that built yeah. a good foundation. And then um, she, she, she says it like this. Yeah, I grew on you like a fungus. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't get like, rid no, of it. No, just the scales fell off my eyes. And then I realized, <laughs> wow, what the heck was I? I, I, need, a, I need a boob. Let's go. Let's you, you forever have those glasses from the beautiful lady's <laughs> <laughs> uh, music video on her. Yeah, yeah. man. That, that's, the, that's how you know <laughs> when, you, when you can look at somebody and you, you feel like you always have those glasses. I haven't seen that video in so long. And then um, someone was like, he's, he's, he, we, were, we were playing the song. And I was like, oh, let me just show you the song so you can know the chords because yeah. he's not from here. And then he's, I was like, hey, here's a video on YouTube. And I'm watching him like, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. It was funny. So I watched it right before you came in because I got a question for it. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was I was looking at it. And I was like, "Oh, this it seems pretty familiar." And then as soon as it kept going, I was like, "Oh yeah." That's the I days. This. I don't. Do you, are you familiar with Overdrive Live? Overdrive Live, yeah, I remember. And so that's where the music videos they would come mm -hmm. out like once a week. Um, Davey D and his brother would record the, the videos. My friend Jay um, was the one who recorded uh, "Beautiful Ladies." Oh, okay. 
and <laughs> we we just had a blast. I mean, I had such a fun life growing up um, in music, and mm-hmm. it's like what. And then finally one day, people were like paying us. Mm. I'm like, why would you pay us? This is this is fun. Someone, oh, yeah. You don't pay someone to surf if they just want to go surfing. Mm-hmm. We just want to play music. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why we um, started climbing up the ladder because we just played everywhere. Yeah. From like age 11, I'm already, we were already gigging. Yeah. But I will say I was very shy growing up. And so I didn't sing. I was just the ukulele player for a while. Mm-hmm. And then my mom was the singer. So my mom would just sing. And we mostly did like traditional Hawaiian. Wait, and this was OPE pickers? This was like the beginning of OPE pickers. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And so we didn't really have any music, any, we didn't write any songs. It was, we were just a, a fun cover band that were young kids. And I would mm. do like yodels. Yoda day, yoda day, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they'd be like, look at that kid yodel. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it was, it was just because I... I was so shy that I didn't, I didn't want people to hear me sing. And then one day my mom was like, she heard me singing Kalo Man in the, you know, Ikaiko Brown. Um, Maybe if you there's, sing there's it. There's a song called Kalo Man. Kalo Man lending a helping hand, teaching the people to malama the land. No, that, that sounds like a great <laughs> song. How do I not know that? <laughs> and um, the first time I met him, I was at Kamehameha schools mm-hmm. and I was probably seventh grade. And in the cafeteria, they randomly would have musicians come and play. And so who was on that slot boat? Yukaika Brown. And his song was getting played on the radio all the mm-hmm. time. And so I knew, I was like, you mean the Yukaika Brown <laughs> here at the calf? And so I like, I brought my ukulele just in case. And someone was like, hey, you should go play with him. Should go play with him. I forget how it happened, but mm-hmm. I ended up jumping on stage with him oh, at the cafeteria. So cool. And um, I think that actually saved me from getting bullied <laughs> for really? the rest of my Kamehameha days, because you know, with this studio tan, <laughs> it's not, it's a little bit ilikea. Yeah. And so doing that was like, oh, instead of me being the, you're the guy, yeah? No, you're the, you're the musician guy that played mm. the Kaika Brown. I was like, that's me. <laughs> Were you the kid that would always walk around with the ukulele and always try? I was. Every school has that kid. I was, but I was never playing it. Oh, so yeah. you're, you're so you're like a guy who uh, walks around with a motorcycle helmet, but doesn't ride a motorcycle. Yeah, like I, w- I would secretly play because I didn't want people. Like I would kind of hide and tuck it under, huh. so that when I go to the music class after school or whatever, that's when I would play. Mm. And um, yeah, our music teacher in, and that's why I really love going to Komamaha because the the music programs they have there, and the the cultivating the, all the musicians that come out of Komamaha as mm-hmm. well. Music is so big. What other school do you know that turns off their whole, um, they, they cut their days in half so mm-hmm. that they can learn how to sing mm-hmm. for a contest at the, you know, song contest. Yeah. So very blessed and grateful to be in that kind of community. Yeah. And having, getting to play in, um, I play violin in school. Um, Alan Akaka was one of the teachers, plays still guitar. And so for our Naopio singers mm-hmm. and seventh grade, I, I would go there after school. And just play music with some friends and, and learn. Hale Siberia Kaka and um, Kaipo. He was like just awesome friends, great musicians. And now they're still like, I, I, haven't, heard, I haven't seen Kaipo in a while. Hope you're doing well, Brother <laughs> Kaipo, if you're watching this. Yeah. What, so how close were you to um, Kimi, Kimi e Anuhea? They were so younger, Kimi and right? Anuhea was a year younger. Okay. Or they are a year younger. Mm-hmm. And... We did music in school, um, but I think the first time we connected was more, there is a, a, a organization called Young Life and they met oh, in, yeah. this, in the I went to Young campus. Life. Oh yeah. yeah. So I just played for the Young Life's 50th anniversary wow. with Kim Ye actually. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but I didn't go for a couple of years and then my friend's like, hey, you should come to this. Mm-hmm. So, all right, shoots. And so I signed up the year that we went to, um, they went to Oregon. Oh, okay. And for Camp a, Woodley. There was a person. camp, yeah. There's all kind of camp stuff, um, yeah. Whatever it's called. Not Camp Anawana. <laughs> camp. Yeah, it was the one in Oregon. Okay. And so that was the first time um, where I I was really hanging out with, like, people other than, than who was in my class because she was mm-hmm. a year younger. And so brought the guitar. It's like a three-hour bus ride in the desert going all the way to the camp. 
And I remember we always would sing, well, it was just so hot and we were all sweaty. And I don't know how, but we sing this for like 10 hours. <laughs> 96 degrees <laughs> in the bus. Oh, bus in the bus. <laughs> I was like, just loop it and loop it and loop it. Yeah, it was just on repeat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the live Spotify playlist. And so I was like, wow, you can sing really good. And then we just would jam. Hmm. And then there'd be little pockets of time where we could actually um, jam a little bit longer. And it's like, oh, let's go try write something. Mm-hmm. Which um, when we were in high school, we wrote the song Make Me Say. Oh, Ooh. what? Yeah. Wow. And so we actually recorded it while I was still in high school. But I had OP pickers and she was kind of starting her um, artistry as well. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, maybe this isn't the right time just yet. And, you know, Spotify and stuff didn't exist. So it wasn't like singles was easy to mm-hmm. just pull out. And so um, 10 years after we recorded it, it was like, remember that song we did? It was like super simple. It's like, maybe it's time now. And so she brought it up. I was like, bro, I got to find those sessions. Cause, <laughs> I mean, with file management, I don't know how good I was back then. So I found it. And, and a lot of the music... Um, that you hear now on that actual release is from 10 years before. That's trippy. The only thing I, I, I just asked, can we just redo our vocal? Cause I'll be 10 years older <laughs> this time. <laughs> and I won't sound like a. <laughs> and so that was, uh, that was fun. Cause we got to release that and then that ended up getting a lot of traction. And then we did like a live version for mm-hmm. high sessions. Yeah. I and um, that. yeah, just, just a lot of uh, cool memories with that song and what? how long that's like, it took like a 10, 15 years. Yeah, it marinated for a yeah. while. What is it about uh, Kamehameha producing all these amazing musicians? Is it something in your golden wild water fountains or is the school lunch just better? <laughs> school lunch is yeah. better. Because <laughs> I hear Kamehameha got yeah. good school lunch. My mom was the cafeteria lady for oh. a while, so she'd sneak me some extra little meals. Yeah. Too. <laughs> but probably something in there. Um, I think they. You can just see where they place their value in, mm. in the culture, in um, those who have talents to like raise them up in that. Um, and I think that's just Hawaiian culture as well too, where it comes to, oh, you get that? Ah, sister, come sing, sing for auntie, mm. you know? I'm not the sister, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go sing for the auntie. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just how music can bring people together. So I feel like in the, in the school, they carved out a lot of that time to make, because I know I know there's multiple schools out there where maybe they don't have a budget for enough you know, ukuleles or you know, and so or a, a music teacher, and so they just don't have they don't have a programs for that. Um, but there were so many options, and mahalo to Bernice Poahi Bishop too <laughs> for um, believing in the Hawaiian kids and investing into their culture and music. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's super cool to hear all these backstories of yeah. how everything came about. One question I got to know is how did you get the name Opihi Pickers? I mean, is it as literal as it sounds? It happened so fast. <laughs> okay, this is before we even had any album or anything. But we were playing, we ended up playing OP, um, OP Pickers. We ended up playing like five to six gigs a weekend for like 10 years straight. Oh. And so after we kept playing, we're like, bro, we gotta, we gotta have some kind of name. We can't just be the little kids because <laughs> we were all young. Um, With the original crew that was- The original OB. crew. Cause I, you know, we were started gigging when I was like fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. And it's your, your brother, my brother or Kevin. My cousin. Kevin came a little bit oh, later. Oh, Kevin later. Okay. Yeah, there was a, a guy named Justin. Okay. He had a nice sunny ukulele. We're like, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then later we, we, at first we started with four ukuleles. Okay. And so at the time we, when I was, was thinking of a name, we were on our way to a gig. It was like in Sandy's area. I think it was for the, um, the marathon. And so we had, a, it was super early, like three in the morning, four in the morning. We're like, okay, this gig is coming up. They're going to introduce us. So I literally looked at my shorts and my shorts, the brand name was Opihi. I wasn't wearing Gucci or Prada or nothing. <laughs> it was just Opihi. And at the time had four ukuleles. So I was like, how about Opihi? We all picked the ukulele. Opihi pickers. Mm. <laughs> and at first I was like, nah, like cheesy. <laughs> but even being young, we're like, it's kind of cute. And 
and honestly, like when we were releasing our, our album Beginnings, which I think had most of our, um, the well-known songs at that time, because we had an album when I was like seventh grade, but that wasn't really us. It was more a different direction than probably what we have in our, our Pu'uvai. Mm-hmm. And so when we wanted to recreate ourselves when it comes to the music and ah, let's just kind of do that. Was, and that was also my first project that I ever recorded was our band. And that opened my eyes to just music and studio and mm. figuring all that out. And so um, we were thinking of changing the name because we thought, ah, maybe you'll keep it. We're getting older now. Um, sounds kind of cheesy, <laughs> to be honest. But then we're like, nah, let's just redefine the name OP Vickers. And even though none of us pick OP. I was going to ask you. That was the question <laughs> I had to ask. And I think a little bit salty too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, I went, I went um, let me see, maybe about six months ago, I was in uh, Molokai or Molokai, whoever. Mm-hmm. And I was at my, my brother, Jeremiah Koholoa. And he took me to go. Um, pick some OP and stuff. He did all the picking. Yeah, yeah. But I, was like, I should like watch. I like be over here and then hold the bag. And like, OP <laughs> yeah, take a picture. OP, yeah. the original OP picker. <laughs> so that was a cool experience to just watch him scrape, watch his brother scrape and like all the waves going over their head. Mm-hmm. Just... Yeah. Okay, you could have been playing uh, OP Man in the Sun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while he was doing that. Sounds like thunder. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the collaboration that we all needed. At some point, OP picker. Oh, and, and OP man. Yeah, and the OP man. Yeah, I'm down. Who who, who sings that? Kyle Creator Boys. Oh, Kyle Creator Boys, of course. Yeah. You know, I have so maybe you might know this story. So my um, sister in law, her uncle Craig Kamahele. Do you know who that is? So That's they amazing. said he's the original OP man, and he wrote that song. Oh. He lives down Kelkaha. Oh, so he yes. he wrote that song and gave it to Kyle Creator Boys. Yes. Yeah. But I just want to know the be- valid- validity of that story. Because, you know, yeah. they say all kinds of things, yeah? Sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I haven't heard the story before. So. Okay. So I got I got to go check with But I know that somebody. They, were, they call Credit Boys does do a lot of like, cover songs as well, too. So I okay. can see that okay. happening. Well, Uncle Craig, you're off the hook for now. <laughs> I believe you go so get far. <laughs> no pee picker. Go get him. Yeah. So that, that whole era was amazing like for our childhood for people even older than us anyone listening to your music how i would describe it like um maybe before kolohe kai and there was roman from kolohe kai there was imua garza <laughs> from op figures like you were the kolohe kai of that era and that's why we sound kind of similar too because i also produced kolohe kai's <laughs> albums and music and He's at, like your offspring. <laughs> and he would come to the studio and, um, yeah, love you, brother Roman. <laughs> we have a long history. To yeah. First coming in, he was a um, basketball player from Castle and played music and, you know, had his boys. And I actually ended up, um, my brother and I at the time, we were doing a, it was like one of those Battle of the Bands. Uh, what did they call it? The, the battle between the high school. I think it's called Battle of the Bands. Oh, okay. And... Um, they were the, for the finals, it was at the top of Dave and Buster's and the finals, there were like three judges and my brother and I were two of the judges mm-hmm. who gets to choose the, the winner. And so one of the bands was my friend, Aokai, love you, brother. <laughs> and the other one was Roman and his crew. And I, th- I think there was like one or two more bands, but I ended up just for that night, I was like, oh, I think. Free food, yes, <laughs> uh, I'll be there. And this awesome music. And so just we put in our scores and, and, and it ended up being where Kolei Kai won. Oh. And so they won like, I don't know what the prize was, but something to record. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure what happened to that side, but I ended up recording them. Mm. And that was the start of like figuring out, okay, what is this simple island music? And our first album um, because I, I did most of the music there. We finished and like, we just locked ourselves in the studio and we, we finished it in like two weeks maybe. Wow. From scratch. And then all of a sudden he's like, New Zealand's popping up, like Australia. And I think he didn't realize how popular he was till he actually went there and then did a tour. And it was like gas stations, sandwich shops, like just crowds building up. It's like, Wow, it's so amazing. Coming from a little bedroom, you know, just yeah. recording and 
it wasn't real drums. It was like this little Triton keyboard and just, I had whatever I had. And um, I think that's what, that's what makes music so accessible too for others who are wanting to do music. It's like the big studios are great and they have great sound, but you can also do so many things, especially with technology nowadays. When I first started, I still had to figure it out, but maybe I'll, show you, I'll send some old studio pictures. <laughs> oh, I would love You see that. my long hair and I would have my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like in, in the studio all the time. And then whenever I would get in trouble, my dad would be like, you're grounded from the studio. That was the worst. Oh, yeah. Just spank me. Yeah. Spank me and send me to jail. <laughs> just just sl- hit me with the slipper. <laughs> Give me the belt. Yeah. <laughs> but took, he took a studio away from me for like a week at least, maybe even a month. I was like, I will never, <laughs> dis- I will never disrespect you anymore. Whatever I, I did at that moment. Wow. But that's how, that's how invested I was. Mm-hmm. I'd skateboard, I'd surf, do music. So... Kind of like that song. I surf all day, play music all night, and I just can't wait mm. to the morning light. And so that's kind of what I would that do. That song was written for <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm in a different different phase in life. So I don't yeah. surf too much anymore. I don't skate. Uh, but I still play music. Still yeah. play music and always in the studio. Always. Yeah. And so how we actually first connected, which is a cool story, because I don't know if people have seen that E.M. Tongi video, the Take E.M. Home yeah. kind of remix that we did with a bunch of artists right before he came home i think um it was before the third place stuff so we could like get extra votes for um uh xavier how's this guy was like planning some stuff with that crew and then he called me he was asking for ideas and i i thought of this idea i was like oh yeah you remember like during covid all those celebrities were singing that uh we was it we are the world or imagine all the people oh yeah 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 um i was like that would be kind of cool if we just got a bunch of like local artists and celebrities to do that um and uh I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to hit up some people. He, then he fell off. He was doing other stuff. I'm like, I'm left alone with this project. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I think I, I reached out to Kimmy. It was a pretty big time crunch, right? It was, yeah, it, like- it was, it, it was uh, less than, not even a week, like four, three or four days. Yeah. And uh, so I forget who I messaged, but eventually I ended up talking to Kimmy because she was just recently on my podcast. So we were communicating um, a lot during that time. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to Imua's studio right now. And then put you on the phone. I told you guys the idea. And you're like, actually, let us take this over. Like, you get a budget and uh, we'll see if we can make this happen. Yeah. And I think uh, the initial one was, why don't we get all the artists that can just sing over the track. Just a quick video. Just set, over Brother selfie, Jesus track. Yeah. And then send, that, send their voices with the track on there. And um, just te- technology-wise, like, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Plus, like, copyright-wise, it'll be the music of Brother Is. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, maybe we can make our own track, make it custom. Each singer is going to have a different vocal range. And so kind of pre-plan that. And so um, it, I actually had some experience in that. That's why there is a, the churches did that on mm-hmm. the island called The Blessing. And there was a lot of mainline churches during COVID doing that. And so I was able to get audio from multiple places and multiple types of quality and um and work with an awesome video team and so that was a great success in that so i'm like i've done and i i did it for a national thing as well and so when you asked us like i've done this before i feel like we can really capitalize and bring him tongue home with quality and so um Thanks for having me. I'm no, a part uh, of that too. Thank you for saving that project. <laughs> I felt so honored because I was, I was like, I don't even know if you knew me at that point, but I was like, Imu Garza is gonna help with this project. <laughs> like, what? Like, what is going on? I'm, I'm talking with Kimye, and she's like one of my favorite artists. That like, I remember going to her concert um, at the Republic for the first time and being like, this is my favorite artist. She's so oh, wow. awesome. And then like, now I'm friends with her, and I'm here working on a project with Kimye. Anyway, it was like such a surreal moment for me yeah. but it was so exciting because like the adrenaline it was like i think we first when we first talked it was already like 11 at night or 10 at night or something and then it just ha- everything happened so quickly sent out emails you're like okay get this get this get this yeah. i'm just messaging people and then they got the um the tracks they recorded themselves you or you actually you you hit up jake shimabukuro he came yeah. over like super late right 
I said, hey, Jake, you want to be a part of this project? And then he's like, yeah, but maybe my, my setup at home isn't that good. I was like, just come over right now. It was like, I don't know, 11.30 It was midnight, PM. yeah, I think. He's like, oh, Ken. And so he just, he came over, we set up uh, and even filmed it too. And um, yeah, it worked out great. And everyone who was a part of that project, such a, a huge <sighs> blessing because they just did it. They're like, yep, I'm in. And, and you can see when Hawaii represents and Ew. when someone's, someone's so also good. representing Hawaii, like, okay, we're with you. Right at EM, we got you, we got you. Yeah, you guys have to go check out that video if you haven't seen it. It's on YouTube. I think it's like Take EM Home or something. You could probably find it. Yeah. It's, it's on Haku Collective. And to see the reaction videos. The reaction videos are so awesome. Yeah, there's people just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we had we got um, extra people like Oliver Steele to say something, yeah. Eddie, Sia, and like some local celebrities. It was it was just yeah, such a cool time. And we did it project. in like 48 to 72 hours or something. Shout mm-hmm. out to Kavika as well for editing. Kavika Lopez. Yeah. And so, yeah, again, uh, mahalo to you guys. That was like oh. one of the highlights. No, uh, mahalo. <laughs> but uh, so that's how we, we first connected. And then I, I, I've i always known that I wanted to get you on the podcast. And so that was kind of, and I was like, oh, I got his number now. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So, and it's it's just so cool how life works like that. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know that you're a legend? Legend to me sounds like legend of the hidden temples. Like, <laughs> like an old oh, guy. That sounds cool. <laughs> you discovered. But well, I, I know that I've been in it for a long time. Yeah. Um, at, at a really young age. And so I've seen the industry. I've seen it change. Actually, my studio right now is in the, is in the back of my, my church which used to be the old Tower Records. Yeah, I and remember so, that. It, as we were redoing the carpet too, you rip it up, you can see like the jazz section. <laughs> and then the electric room, it still has, here's the lights for the pop section. Just really cool to, to know that music is still being made. Mm-hmm. And that I used to also walk into Tower Records and buy, buy CDs, because that was the medium to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so excited getting like this CD player that would loop sections mm. you just set an a point you set a b point and so that's how i learned a lot of solos like i would just keep looping back and forth <laughs> it's like this is awesome technology instead of the tape you have to rewind yeah yeah um but i guess i don't know legend legend i also i don't know i think of like brothers kaz as, as legend um but i guess in the island music because i've been around so long um i guess honored to be in in this world still yeah, but I think it's so like um, different generations and decades because like two, so I'm about 10 years younger and then even people probably a little younger would probably have known that OP Picker era. So it's like to us, you're like the legend, you know, to like, there's like Patrick Mahomes and then like Tom Brady, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that those levels. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and as, um, as you get older, maybe more people will think you're, an old legend. I don't know. I mean, that's the thing with music. <laughs> I, growing up, I was just to skateboard a lot. Mm-hmm. And I would skate with all the sponsored guys. And then they'd really push me. And then I'd get really hurt. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let me think about this. If I continue with this, I can probably go another 10 years, maybe. It's like, but if I do music, I mean, look at Willie Nelson. Whatever. Look at ZZ Top. <laughs> just anyone who's in the Kahiko stage. Yes, I can do this a long time, and so I, I shifted more into music. Wow, it's it's cool you had that foresight. Yeah, because it just was getting too painful. <laughs> I was like, maybe a string could break, and that could like you know hurt my finger. But it'd be I'd be a lot more safer on on stage and and in the studio. Yeah. Well, when did you decide to kind of uh, take a step back and instead of being on the stage all the time, mm-hmm. singing, playing? you just really went into producing? Well, I was still producing at the beginning while I was playing mm-hmm. as well. But I think after after so many, because once I did a certain type of project, like OP Pickers, so the first time I was ever recorded, I was um, actually 11. And someone put a mic in front of my ukulele. And it was a real dingy area on the outside. I was like, I'm going to get mobbed. And then I walked <laughs> inside with my parents, of course. And and it was this beautiful studio. I was like, wow. And then they, they put that mic, I could hear it in my headphones. And that really opened up like, what is this? Mm. And I didn't go to college or anything for this, but that was the beginning of me like wanting to do all that. And so um, we were promoting our first album 
not the beginnings album. Beginnings, we, we call it beginnings because that's like our new revamp. But our very first album called Fresh Off The Rocks, if you have that, then that is a relic that you, you might find it in a pawn shop because <laughs> it's not out anywhere. I do have the MP3s, but Ooh. it's when I was really, really young. And we were promoting it at a um, all the, we used to do Borders, um, Temple Party. Music, House of Music, Tower Records, radio stations. That's how mm-hmm. we used to promote it before. We didn't send out a flyer and, um, you know, put on, there's, there was no Spotify, YouTube, nothing. And so, and even, even like when we wanted to interact with our fans, there was a website eventually, which was um, like angelfire.com. Oh, okay. MySpace. Backslash. OP because MySpace. One of them, yeah. And people could communicate. They could like type on the the. The wall. Like the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that was our way. And then uh, like three days later, we'd reply. <laughs> and then 10 days later, they'd be like, oh, I can't believe you replied. <laughs> it's just such a, a, a different time. Yeah. But CDs, you know, we'd sign a lot of CDs. And we just did the whole route. But when we went to Jelly's, there was uh, the manager of that store. And his name was Brett Ortone. And he's the one who really walked me through studio and learning and live concerts And so he'd take me to like Bruce Springsteen, Paul McCartney, B.B. King, Prince. And I just got to watch, okay, here's what it it looks like to be a showman, like when you're on stage, Mm -hmm. how to entertain. And then just here's good songs. He'd get me like, I'd study the Beatles and he got me all the Beatles, like lyrics books and chord books. And I would just like learn all these songs. And so thank you to you, Brett Ortone, if you're watching (laughs) for all that you've poured into me. And the fact that I'm still going is a lot because of you. So mahalo nui. And he would, he would um, really encourage me in studio stuff. Okay, here's, here's a studio. And then I would actually start as the guy who would record rehearsals. So Fiji would come in, Natural Vibes would come in, and I would just be figuring out how to record them so that they can have a rehearsal tape. And then I started doing my own project. Oh, you can record over yourself? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then multi-track. Okay, and so my first song I did was like, I don't know, Twilight Zone or The Simpsons or something where I just like kept adding and adding. Um, but during that time when I was like, I, I want to record our band, OP Pickers, and figure it out along the way. So that was our first album. And then we ended up doing six albums total. But since I was getting radio play, more projects like that came. And so I recorded Rebel Soldiers when they came in, mm. Natural Vibes, um, I got to work with a lot of uh, key people, key players in the game during that time. And also also just starting off too, like, hey, you're not, you're just starting your band, like let's figure out a cool sound. And so after, to get to the, this is a long winded way of getting to the question that mm-hmm. you asked. No, I love it. I think we I- have was, lots of time. <laughs> I think I started stepping down when the studio got more busy. Mm. And I was like, there's a lot of entertainers and musicians out there and they're doing great. And I'll still play it just so mm-hmm. to release my wiggles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do want to um, like honor those who are also gigging. And I, I, and I feel like I, the pool is a little bit smaller in the recording world. And so I'm like, I'm just going to stick with the recording world right now and catapult people up. And so I feel like that's, that's my goal right now is to be a lot, um, be very selfless and to partner with the vision like when you called about Mm -hmm. that i'm like great i have another like way that i can help to Mm -hmm. and like to visualize this from experience over the years and so i love that when artists can come in and songwriters and you make them just like how you're making me feel at home here Mm -hmm. when they come to the studio it's not this huge studio um but to make them feel at home coffee tea Mm -hmm. and then that way when they when they show me their song like, hey, great song. Uh, maybe here's some suggestions. But really excited to get get whatever you have in your head yeah. out as well. And then it is a collaborative effort. So I would love to try different things and, and see if we can um, both meet mm-hmm. over there. It's so but just cool. enjoying that process. So I really love that process mm-hmm. and enjoy it when it comes to having someone go as far as they feel like they can and then taking them to the next level and like, hey, let's go. You, this, this is, let's chisel away maybe this. Mm-hmm. Maybe it doesn't need to be this long. Maybe this could be faster. Let's try it in a different key. You know, just trying different options to see what is the, what is going to be the best for this song. 
taking myself out of the equation, like, and focusing also on your artistry, like what is something that you do that no one else does mm. and how to capitalize on that? And so I really believe in, in each person is unique and gifted and different. And I'm just there to partner with them mm-hmm. and to, to make them feel like when the music is released, whether it sells or not, it's like that piece of art is something that they're going to be proud of the rest of their life. I love that. That's so cool. Seeing it in person too was uh, kind of mind blowing for me. So I'm not super into music. I, I don't. I don't play instruments, whatever. But the first time I um, produced something, um, I went to Noah's place. Oh yeah, C Major Seven because he did like this. Is uh, that where you did Kimias? Oh, we did do Kimias over there. Yeah, but um, I came another time because I needed like an opening soundtrack for our, our podcast. Yeah. So the people, if you hear it on the trailer, the opening of, of this episode, of the episodes, that was made by Noah Cronin. So, oh. but it was just so cool. He's like, okay, let me do this and like play this and like da 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 I'm like, what's going on? But this is so cool. So yeah. like that whole process, like creating something from scratch, um, I can see how that is just so exhilarating. Yeah, me and Noah are, are tight too. So Noah used to be in Kolo Hikai. Oh, he yes, was yes, like yes, the ukulele player yeah. live. And so when we went on tour, I was the guitar player and keyboard player. And then he was the ukulele. And we, we have a couple of pictures of us like back to back. And um, But Noah was was there in the studio a lot too. And I'm I'm grateful to see that he's he's uh, doing this really well. Mm-hmm. And he built a studio in the back of his place. And, yeah. um, and then programs like the Melee program, is really awesome too because there's there's not a lot on the island and so for people who are interested in that you know sign up for the melee program i know that noah was a part of that too and so yeah we, i love just learning from each other and no matter how much longer i've been i'm, I'm still asking noah like hey what do you think about this mix or mm-hmm. you know what what are some ways i can improve on this and so never like get there never arrive mm-hmm. just always like yeah always learn learning. from everybody else too yeah, exactly. So I see all these people coming up, these musicians gigging, playing, a couple of friends of mine now, yeah. you know, Kelana. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was just on um, on stage at our live show. And I, awesome. like to, I, I like to look back to people like Kimye, Anuhea, and then like the bands back in the day, like all the people you mentioned. And what, I wonder, who are the next ones? Do you have any? Who are the I next do, ones? Are the when next it comes ones. to like island music or oh, just like music? Our, our history over here in, in, I guess, popular in Hawaii. Like who's the next OP? Who's the next yeah. Fiji? Who's the next Natty Vibe, Manao Company, uh, Anuhea, Kimie? There's so many. And you can see them on social media, whoever mm-hmm. else, like the ones who, who are consistent. I feel mm-hmm. like, yes, there's a lot of talent. There's, just, there's always a lot of talent in Hawaii. And so... Um, some of the people that I've worked with recently that are up and coming, and I'm like, if you guys stick with this, yes, you guys will go. Yeah, like who should we be far. keeping an eye on? Um, I'm starting a new project with Tiara Gomes. Oh, she's a superstar. So she I, plays I, with um, yeah. Kimye as well. Yes, I think she's, I already, I think she's going to be big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jonah Mossman, he's oh, one yeah. that he, he- comes around here sometimes. He yeah. Goes right over there, yeah. So he's, he's a good friend. Yeah. And um, I'm not working on his stuff though, but he's he's one that's like, I see him producing and see him working mm-hmm. on his things. Um, I'm working on a, on a song right now with Johnny Sweet. So he's yep. definitely got already a lot of traction. Yeah, he's solid. Um, man, the ones that are keep, they keep on keeping on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Kimye, Kulohikai, like they never stopped. <laughs> ever, ever since we recorded. It's like, hey, what's the next thing? That, that's mm. what I, I think the artists that are going to go far are going to be the ones that once they're done, okay, what's next? Mm. And they always have that before they even release their stuff. Mm. So the consistency is key. It's going to be, in, but I also, I also love those who are kind of underdogs and they don't really post much. And like, there's this guy named Adaluk oh, okay. and he's a project that I'm working on. I don't know who that it's is. It's more like hip hop, but okay. it's so good. It's clean and it's like, I listen to that a lot and, mm-hmm. and it's not even released yet, but I'm like trying to figure out how to get it. So there's, there's some of my favorites, like when I'm, uh, that I'm recording, I feel like everyone's like, like every single project that comes through, you kind of have to treat it like this is my child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even, even if this one's a little rough around the edges, like you still got to make great music. You got to love all your children. You gotta love them all. <laughs> and so whoever comes in, I'm like, and I'll, I'll tell them too, like, 
okay, this is this is a little bit out of the the box, and maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should put your money more towards in a nice way, like voice lessons mm-hmm. or or really, if you if you want this to be a career, it's like you probably should invest more into that side first, and then come here. But I've, I'll be down to. So I, I try to tell people. Well, that's good that yeah. you keep it real. Yeah, I was like, can you can you hear how this is not really musical <laughs> or you know. <laughs> But there's a sense says, of but let's try. But let's try. Because maybe this is something that I I, I can't see right now. <laughs> but always always look forward to um, yeah seeing what happens when it mm-hmm. comes to working with musicians and even gigs too. Like I think that I think that's another with the technology that we have nowadays, the things that you can make in the studio mm-hmm. and then put that to the stage with in ears and click and. You know, instead of having ten keyboard players that are playing <laughs> the parts on the project, you can like yeah. have one keyboard player, and then maybe nine of the the tracks can be on track. Yeah. Then there's and then a whoever's machine mixing stuff. the front of house, like I feel like when we did that with um, Kola Hikai for this recent few tours that he was he's been doing, I kind of helped piece together their set. So like from song to song, here's the transitions, make transitions that are cool for live, maybe not for album. And like change up the song, so like how Bruno Mars always changes it up when mm-hmm. it comes to the arrangement compared to the live versus studio, and just just get the fans like yes. Mm-hmm. But the but sometimes the only way to do that to get that big of big enough of sound and to be tight is to really work out the pre production things in the studio, mm-hmm. and so that's why I love um, like being in this little room and then seeing the seeing it go out into the world. Mm-hmm. It's like, even in here, in this, your podcast reaches so many people too. So for it to be in a, in a nice humble room, <laughs> to know that it's um, the, the reach, like, like what are you working so hard for? It's like, because even though we're in this, man, I know that it's going to reach so many people mm-hmm. and it's going to change lives. And so I'm in the, the business of changing lives. I love that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that, as creatives, as creators, we're producing something for ourselves. Yes. You know, this is an expression for ourselves. This is helps us just as much as it helps other people. But when you do get the validation and it actually affects people and people message you like, thank you for doing this, it does motivate you to keep going. Yeah. And I love that. That's why awards, like award shows and Nahoko Hanahan Awards, definitely honored to be like mm-hmm. nominated for those and to even win some. Um, but to me, that's like, it's like you pat on the back, just keep mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. Whether you're nominated or not, if, even if you make it to the preliminary ballots, like you release something. Mm-hmm. It's like be proud of the process. And sometimes it takes like a few years for traction and just for people to um, notice you. Mm-hmm. Um, but especially bedroom producers, we can get so lonely at times <laughs> if we're not working with other people. And it can get kind of depressing if you release something and then you don't really get much, but man, just keep it up. If you, if you really believe in that, someone's going to see it later on down the road and they're going to be like, that's gold. Like let's, mm-hmm. let's, how do we partner with you to buy you a, a better mic, you know, <laughs> a better preamp. And then let's just keep increasing and you just keep um, all the hard work. I, f- I feel like when with social media nowadays, you can get handed the success but if you're not ready for it and you you haven't had those times of failure to grow and to mm-hmm. it's like it's, you're gonna some people will just fall mm-hmm. and they'll ride that wave and then it's gone and then they just keep trying to reach for that when it's like, no, actually I was good down here and then I'm good up here. But if it goes back down, you know, character wise, what what I'm doing, how I'm improving, how I keep getting better. And no matter what kind of, because especially nowadays with the hate comments and everything, you can choose to look at them or not mm-hmm. to. And that's either going to fuel you or it's going to stomp on you. And mm-hmm. so I choose to not look at a lot of that. <laughs> I don't know how much hate mail there is out there anyway, mm-hmm. but. There's we, a lot we, more positive. But things, we didn't though. have, we didn't really have that growing up because yeah, there wasn't, there no there wasn't a media, sounding yeah. board. It was like, okay, next gig, next gig. Yeah. And it, 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 it's not like social media is real life. Like you don't have people coming up to you like, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody does that in person. It's only on online. It is. Yeah. 
It's you a know, vicious world out there. You know who I really like that's underground that I wish had social media, um, but he just doesn't care. It's uh, Nick Kurosawa. Do you know who that is? Nick Kurosawa? Do you, you don't know who that is? No, I need no. To. He's so underground that you don't even know who he is. You better, you better get up that ground. He, <laughs> <laughs> Oz, you know who, who that is? Oh, my. What style? He's so good. I don't know. He has like this crazy, like deep voice. Um, I don't, mm. I, uh, I'll play you a song. Like, oh, another one. Um, Dylan Pakele. Did I say him? No, no. But that's our friend, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. Because his, his whole, his dad and I mean, Ohana. And yes. he just texted me before this. So yeah. we might do another album. So Okay. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan's one of our, our guys. Yeah. Oh, we'll play it. We're going to take a shishi oh, break yeah, uh, yeah, soon. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll play that. But um, yeah. you're going you're gonna to bless us with a song, right? Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> talk about all this old nostalgic yeah. legend. I'm going to dust, dust, yeah, dust off. off the cobwebs. <laughs> the cobwebs. And yeah, maybe I'll do a pee pick or something. Yeah, the old, old man's coming out of retirement. <laughs> I'll make you sing along. <laughs> sing along. All right. And if you sing along too. I will not, but I will be enjoying. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll take a quick shishi break and we'll be right back. Mahalo. Immerse yourself in the underwater wonders of Hawaii's marine life with Hawaii Ocean Charter's hands-on guided snorkeling tours. Whether it's your first time falling in love with Waikiki or you're rediscovering its beauty just like me, there is no better way to see it than from the ocean. Personally, it was one of the best things I have done this year. I got to snorkel with some turtles and fishes and I was able to catch the coolest sunset over the water. Conveniently located in Kakako with online booking and live availability, finding the perfect day on the water couldn't be easier with them. Ride in style on their unique and well cared for power catamaran that offers all the amenities you need. Locally owned and operated, their friendly crew lives for sharing their love for the ocean with others. Sunset cruises, guided snorkeling tours, well and dolphin watching, coastal sightseeing and fireworks shows are among the tours their guests love the most. Use code KIA50 to get $50 off of your next charter. All right, we're back from a quick shishi break. Oh, <laughs> some great shishi provided by Shakati. Mahalo. Right now, we have an amazing live performance from our guest today, Imua Garza. So take it away. Here's some old OP picker stuff. I'm going to dust off the cobwebs on this one. Take you back to the year 2001. What grade you was? What school you in? Body. Last night I had the strangest, strangest dream. I dreamt my pretty baby was calling me, and she said. Sing along there, Kamaka, little, little Kamaka. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm moving real slow, cause I want you to enjoy a romantic show. And she said, ooh, baby, please hurry. And though she may be miles away, my love will always stay nice. And when this dream shall end, I know we will be I think you keep my love away from holding you so tight through the dark night. I miss you, girl. I miss you much. I miss your old fashioned touch. Sounds so good. I miss you, girl. I miss you much. I miss your old fashioned touch. Well, party on the vocals. Right on, come back <laughs> The bridge. I miss your old fashioned touch, girl. I miss it so much. You fill my body with the sweet sense emotion. You make me moving in a slow kind of motion. So love me, love me, baby. Kiss me and hug me. And don't let me go. I miss you, girl. I miss you much. I miss your old fashioned touch. I miss you, girl, I miss you much. <laughs> I miss you old fashioned. What's that? I miss you, girl, I miss you much. I miss you old fashioned touch. Makalani. Miss you, girl, I miss you much. I miss you old fashioned. Going home. 
miss you, girl. I miss you much. I miss your old fashioned test. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a game that's guaranteed to make you laugh at your next party? You need to check out Moat Gabs, the newest card game designed right here in Hawaii for locals by locals. Race against the clock as you read seemingly random phrases that sound like gibberish at first, like peel gold main coal or heat heat wood goal or something like Male lay cow leaky maka until you figure out the local phrase. Male kaliki maka, Eddie would go, and pickle mango. Each card has phrases that could be a person, place, or thing, but any local should know them. They just might not understand it at first. Moat Gabs, the fun kind game where you read the gibberish out loud to decode the local phrase. All right, we're back again. That was a beautiful performance. Mahalo Nui. You had some great harmonies oh, there. I mean, I tried my best, you know. Some people just got it and some people don't. And I obviously got it. What an amazing transformation you also had there too. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I was here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't just on my phone uh, scrolling through TikTok. <laughs> I loved it. That was awesome. You're really. going to join me on the, the other shows too. <laughs> yeah. You, you have an... Um, everlasting impression on the lives of everybody from two, early 2000 to l right before 2010. Thank you. And forever, <laughs> forever on. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like watching that whole thing. Uh, I was just, I felt like it took me back to elementary middle school days. What school you at? Uh, so I went Kulakayapuni, uh, Pumanaleo, oh, yes. Hilo, Kaumeke Kael and Kekulo Navi Okalenio Pu'u, all on the big island. And then my senior year of high school, I moved to Kaiser. So I graduated. So Kaiser, Kaiser. Grad. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to see all the, all the cool But yeah, I'm basically kindergarten, I mean, preschool to 11th grade, all Hawaiian immersion. Beautiful. Yeah. So I don't really claim then, Kaiser, but I mean, yeah. I graduated from Kaiser. Yeah. And I had a great time there. I just moved there to play sports and I loved it. Nice. Okay, so we'll get into the social media fan questions presented yeah. by Texco and Hawaii, all right? This first question comes from Leolani. She asks, favorite memories from being in OP Pickers with your brother? Favorite memories of being mm -hmm. in OP Pickers? Man, we had so many. <laughs> let, me just, let me just walk down memory lane real quick yeah. in my head. Um, I, I know that with my with my brother, this is like a, in the beginning of OP Pickers, but also when him and I would just play mm -hmm. random little gigs. Um, but we we got to play in Japan Ooh. with uh, for, with Royce Kuma, and he had his crew at Call Creative Boys was there too, and that was the first time that like we we got to to have a gig outside of Hawaii, and so. When we got paid, we got paid like, I don't know, three, four hundred bucks each. We're like, what? We, we celebrated so hard. <laughs> That's a lot for... Yeah, we're nothing. like, we're, we're kids. And yeah. like, we're, I remember just running around the hotel room. <laughs> like, yeah. I think we were like playing with the toilet water. We're just like... <laughs> Oh, but I think the let me let me change that too because maybe you don't want to visualize me playing with toilet water because that would be definitely be a lasting impression. <laughs> but um, I think when OP Pickers first came on the radio, that that first experience, we're like, what? It's actually like like mm -hmm. they were playing it, and then it started counting down. Like you know, it was going to this top five, top ten, whatever, and it finally made it to the top when it was number one. We like lost it. We were in the house. We were like holding each other. My brother and I we were jumping up and down in circles. It was just such a surreal moment in that um, in that time of place. It was sweet. It was like a sweetness. There wasn't any cockiness. It was more like we're just so excited that our music's being Proud. heard uh, yeah. outside of just you know little birthday parties and stuff. So and then it's our our own songs too. So I think that was the the first like. Mm -hmm. Awesome memory of <laughs> jumping up and down, That's a hugging good each other, That's a and good then we one. call. It's like, I don't know if you ever seen the the what is that that thing you do in that movie? 
Like, where their song first gets on the radio, it's like a, a, a fake band from the 60s. Mm-hmm. And like they call all their whoever's in the band and like they're working, but then they put down what they're doing. They all like meet mm-hmm. each other and they just like, I think we just had that, that brother moment and um, called our cousin and called a friend. <laughs> we all came over and it was just such a, a fun time. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I love, that's a core memory for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Mahalo, Leo. Uh, kona, kona ia aloha ia. I think that's a, kona ia aloha ia. I think that's what it is. Uh, this person says, how did you come up with the beautiful girls music video? We were talking about it earlier, but if, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, you guys have to go to YouTube and check it out because it is so funny. <laughs> yeah. How I came up with that was really the mastermind of my friend Jay. And um, he was the one who, he would, he would have storyboards and they, they would just kind of draw it out. Like, here's what we think, you know, day one, we could do this, day two. And that was the first time that I was ever in like more of a video production at the mm-hmm. time. Um, Jay Hanamura. And this is like maybe only a few years after YouTube was created. Yeah, but he was always in the video projects and um, he always had the eye, you know, and like the creative at, at that time. And, and I think he's still doing it, honestly. But to, to visualize what's going to be funny and what's going to be like when they see the video, it's going to make them laugh. Because really the song's about like, my hopo hopo, e hao oli. Don't worry, be happy because there's many fish in the, mm-hmm. in the sea. <laughs> so for those who just got gotten broken up, we're like, we wanted to make it kind of lighthearted as well. It's like in the midst of chaos in their life. It's like, ah, no worries, because there's many, there's a many of them in the deeper blue sea. Yeah, many of them with the ice cream cone. <laughs> with the many of them with ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like, what's, what's a funny um, thing we could do? And so he mentioned that. It's like, bro, what if you get these glasses? And then they're like these magical glasses you find in the forest. And then whenever you turn them on, all you see is beautiful ladies. <laughs> and beautiful girls. I was like, okay. I was like, keep going. And then I, I was like, we're just going to have to film it. And then you just kind of... <laughs> And then show me the video, the edits after, and we were we were like rolling when we saw that. And my, and in that um, music video too is my mom and my dad. They're walking on the street. They're in the oh, video. Oh, that was them in the beginning. Um, yeah, the guy Brett Orton that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. He's pushing the trash can. Mm-hmm. Um, my cousin was the one going down on the scooter. Um, but we yeah we just found like a a side. That's so forest. funny. We we were talking. We we're like, you probably just grabbed. A bunch of people that they could find at that time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of it was family. Yeah. And then um, my wife was my double. I saw that. So I when, it, when that. it looks yeah. to me, mm-hmm. it's, it's her. I was like, hey, this is why. And we were like just yeah. married that time. Because mm-hmm. that, that, that song came out 2006. Mm-hmm. And we got married in 2006. So we were newlyweds at the time. And then my, my grandpa was the one who found the glasses at oh, the end. Oh, then with a big yeah. smile. <laughs> So it is fun, like watching watching it back because yeah. I, I honestly haven't seen it in like some years. Mm-hmm. And then when I was showing my, our bass player at the time, like, oh, here's here's how to play the song. Like, here I'll just pull it up on YouTube. I was watching. It. I was like, man, that was that was some fun times. Yeah, and so, simpler days, simple days. But that was a a production because mm-hmm. okay, here's here's a um, location number one. We've got to set up our little crew, and then yeah, I'm sure it's with cameras and technology, it'll probably be easier and, and editing it. But mm-hmm. at the time it was like, this is pretty revolutionary. It man. was, I doing? saw the edits. It was like these like little shadow edits. Yeah. And, yeah. And even the intro, mm-hmm. like to have the, there wasn't any green screen or anything. So he'd had to like chop up that. And then like the background leaves and it's just the drummer. Like that's it was pretty, good. pretty awesome to see. I was entertained the whole time from a 17 <laughs> year old video. Or There's another funny one with my friend and I, and his name is Kamu Singh. So Imua and Imua Gar is a Kamu Singh. We had a album called Harmony City and mm-hmm. there was a song called Wake Up. And the same producer of the Beautiful Ladies video did this video. And um, when you get a chance, it's it's another nostalgic video it, that's it's pretty It's on YouTube? Funny. It is, yeah. What is it called? Um, Wake Up. Wake up, okay. Emo Garza, okay. We gotta go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but that one, that one is some funny ones. Like I'm Superman, and like I fall asleep, I jump on the TV, and whatever channel they change to, it's like I'm on the Country Channel. <laughs> I'm in like playing poker. I'm in like uh, first date. <laughs> like it just keeps switching the channel. And then I'm, I'm, I went to the zoo. Like there's, 
it was like a six oh, day wow. film. And so that was like after Beautiful Ladies. So I was like, okay, we did the Beautiful Ladies. Now what's next? What's the next thing we can like? Yeah, and it's comedic as well. It's definitely comedic. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you who have seen it, Mahalo Nui. Yeah. <laughs> and for those of you who are going to see it, I guess, yeah. Have and it's fun. funny because like that was the style too back then. Like this, yeah. it's kind of like, like, you see it now, it's like, corny or cheesy like you're like they're they're, yeah. they're not real actors obviously but that's what makes it funny yeah that's what i loved about it i mean the classic local music video yeah. is you're on the beach <laughs> strumming the bass the bass and the electric guitar is not plugged in it's just full-on music what can we get in two to four hours of filming and mm -hmm. like this is what we got and the wind's blowing your toupees <laughs> falling off it's like <laughs> That's just that's just the scene. That, that yeah. was the look back then, mm -hmm. and it was easy, and um, there was no pressure. <laughs> yeah, you know what was a throwback scene? The Echo shirt, uh, that one guy in the blue shirt. Oh yeah, the, was it a Rhino or Elephant? You, you remember yeah, that brand yeah. Echo? Yeah. I think that's what that it was, was called. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I never see that shirt. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. Please, please, please go check it out if you guys haven't seen it yet. It's everybody needs to see it at least <laughs> once in their life. <laughs> Next question comes from Rihanna Alana Lewis. This person says, did you ever experience any rejection in the industry that discouraged you? Oh, rejection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when I was talking about the like winning awards mm -hmm. and losing awards and not being nominated, um, at first it stings. It's like, does anybody even hear me? <laughs> like, <it's laughs> Nobody this, even cares. It's all this work that I'm doing by myself or like, you know, in this little room even worth anything. Um, I definitely have had those moments of disappointment, but it wasn't it wasn't deep enough. Mm. It was more of a okay, but now what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yes, I'm gonna get defeated, and and it's fine. And I don't and I don't even like competition. Like I'd rather hui together all the producers in on the island and like cheer them on, you know. And and it's it's never been about a battle of like, oh, let me take your band or let me take your artist. And so it's like, you just keep doing what you're doing. And yes, you're gonna fall just like when you're learning how to ride a bike. And so after a while you just get a couple, couple scabs and then, yeah, okay, this is gonna make me stronger for the next thing. And um, I, I think if you just look, if you look at everything in uh, what am I gonna, what, what, is, what is the Lord showing me in this time right now? And how can I grow from this? And how can this add to my character? But of course, there's definitely times. I think when I first met one of, I won't say his name, but I met someone who was um, pretty influential in my life when it comes to music. And when I finally got the chance to meet this person, I put my hand, I was like, I'm so excited to meet you as a local musician too. And then he just looked at my hand and then he walked away. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so that like disappointment, um, that made me, that made me sad. But then I also looked back and like, man, he looked at my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the loser. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So Did how to fire you up though? Like, oh, I, I want to get back at no, him. Like, I was I never a scrapper so or anything. I'm always or like, like get so big that like he regrets not shaking my hand. Um, there was, there are times where a few musicians kind of rubbed me the wrong way when it comes to like, just the way that they would look. But really our island's so small. It's like, Maybe maybe that's just how their their eyes are, <laughs> you know. Maybe they just have a really deep <laughs> brow, um, so to not take things so personal. Mm -hmm. I think that's how how you can last in this industry too. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, they, they're they're good. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't let it affect me in a way that's gonna um, have me resent. And then if it's something that I have to like when I see them next time, because I know there's gonna be a next time, I want to make sure that I'm pono, I'm good, mm -hmm. and that when um, when they come, I'm not gonna try to walk away the other way. But yeah, definitely there's some there's some stinging moments, but nothing that's really stopped me from doing this. I think because mm -hmm. I just love it so much. Yeah, that it's my passion for it kind of overtook any of the criticism. Yeah, that happened. And I think that's that's a great thing that to bring up is because when when you love something so much um, and you're so passionate about doing something, nobody's gonna stop you from doing it. Besa except yourself. Yeah, you could have people saying certain things or criticizing you, but at the end of the day, if you love it and this is what you want to do, you're just gonna keep going. 
the, yeah. I mean, the only difference, I guess, is between the goods and the greats are the con is the consistency. Yeah. It's like how long can you keep going? How long can you keep? going forward when you got wind and rain and thunder and like bugs flying mm. into your face but you just keep going you're going and then boom sunlight success yeah i love i love when i see people like henry copono and what he's doing too because he could just you know be the the headline of all the shows and even still tour and do that but he's been really collaborating with a lot of artists mm -hmm. up-and-coming artists and I love that. Like, I love someone who's already been there holding everyone else's hand. Like, you got this. Like, and it, it's just such a great encouragement to see other musicians, especially who's been through that, to um, like lift them up. Mm -hmm. And we need that. And they give, need give that. them a stage for a little bit. It's like, hey, just keep, keep going. Like, you're, you're doing great. And so mm -hmm. I think when, when we can hear that as musicians um, and, Go to the tip jar, give some tips to the musicians. They're they're there for three, four hours. Like sometimes that I think when I was playing, I was playing in Waikiki for like four hours every night. And I, I haven't really been a, a huge like Waikiki gigging person, but I could see how doing that every day in a corner could seem like oh, I'm not making a difference. But really, you are. There's gonna be one kid that's gonna be watching and like they're gonna it's gonna change their life mm -hmm. and they're gonna one day wanna do exactly what you're doing. So I think a lot of times we get so used to the mundane and then um, it just seems old and and sometimes it does show on the musician's face, but it's like, man, if this is something you love doing, just just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would you rather be working somewhere else or would you rather, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. the answer is that, but I think if it burns within you, like I have to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why I was so, um, I was I was like taken aback when we finally got paid for gigs Cause I was like, no, we don't. You don't take. We don't take money for gigs. Like we just <laughs> for kids. Number one, and then number two is like, don't you want? Don't you just want music at your your place? It's, that's what we do. We we'd stuff like four of us in a small little Saturn car, sound system, bass, and my mom and dad, the mom momager, dadager, they they drive us to these places, and then like, hey, do, our our kids are playing music. Do you guys want any? And we would just play for free. And that's I what you that's thought. What Your parents are just pocketing all the money. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <didn't I> like that. <laughs> but it is like I would I would love to just do projects for free all the time, mm -hmm. just to encourage everybody like keep going, keep going. Yeah. And there are there are certain projects I'm like actually I think I need to do this one for free. That's awesome. Um, so always always giving back, knowing where I started, knowing where people are starting in this day and age too, and. Um, yeah, how do we, how do we, aloha ke kahi, ke kahi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's why working together and supporting each other. Yeah. That's how we can do that. I love that. Uh, next question comes from Mr. Jordan Augustine. Jordan. This person wants to know, with all the knowledge and skill you have, do you ever get tired of music at times? I'm going to guess, guess no. Oh, <laughs> I, you think that I would. <laughs> yeah. And that's part of Jordan who used to jam with Kulai Kai. Too. Oh, nice. Jordan. Um, I, I, I can honestly say that I haven't gotten tired of music. And I've been in it since 1995. Ever since I was nine. Like, I'm one that you have to pull away from the piano if I'm practicing. Mm. Um, my mom, and maybe this is, this is kind of out of fault to me. But instead of helping clean the kitchen, <laughs> when I'm growing up in, in my house, my mom's like, oh, can you just play some like dishwashing music for us? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. So I just bring, open my books and play. And then it'd be more joyous for them while they wash the dishes. But then growing up, <laughs> then once I got married, hey, babe, I'm going to go play some dishwashing music. While you wash the <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't work. It didn't She's work. looking at you. <laughs> That's so funny. That's also a really cool like parental move. Yeah, they, was, they were just always encouraging, mm -hmm. always cultivating um, my love for music. And I even had that question like, hey, dad, do I need to go to college if I'm doing this? Or like, do you expect me to get another job? He's like, you love what you're doing and you're getting paid and like, just keep going for it. Mm -hmm. And so ever since I was, honestly, since I was fifth grade, I knew that I would be doing what I'm doing right now. And so I just like walked in that. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to college and like, maybe I'm going to switch my major. It's like, no, I knew exactly even if it even if there was no profit in the 
I mean, luckily we had an OPE Pickers and we were a pretty busy band during that season. Um, so that kept me afloat and it allowed me to invest more into, okay, now I want to learn this instrument. So I'd buy it with my gig money and then I'd buy this. Most of my money goes back into music, mm -hmm. even even right now. Of course, to the family too, but mm -hmm. I'm always like, okay, what's, what's the next thing that I can get better and faster yeah. and more equipped? And also try to stay like true with the times of where we're at, of what's popular. Like if someone comes in, I don't want them to sound like the year 2000, you know? <laughs> I want them to sound like 2020, <laughs> but also um, I want them to sound like themselves. Mm -hmm. So to be really like, in order to have a love for music, I have to have a love for like all genres as well and to know what's out there. So if that kind of project comes, I'm like, oh, sorry, I only do island music. No, it's like, yeah, I'm pretty versed on on these artists or, or like, or show me. And then let me let me listen to this and mm -hmm. let me get some production ideas. Um, Cause I'm always down to try. I'm always like, like nothing's out of reach. If you, if you have that mindset, it's like, okay, I don't really know maybe polka too well, but if I listen to some polka artists and like learn a few songs, I'll at least have the gist of where they're, of where they're going, like what angle they're going to go to. So if you want a polka breakdown section, it's like, <laughs> let me do a, a little, some research. Like Kimmy is one that we worked mm -hmm. on. It was um, kind of Brazilian samba style for the song Ketchatan. Mm -hmm. And and we just did some like studying. I just listened to a bunch of top songs from Portugal. I listened to like, um, like I was studying more samba instruments and then putting some of those patterns into the music, even though it's it goes to like island in the middle mm -hmm. of it too. But it's like, there's so many influences that we can we can take from. So it's for me, I, I do not get tired of it because I'm like, I'm, I'm just always a student, mm -hmm. always learning. Yeah. And that's the thing when you have genuine interests, whether that's a language, music, yeah. a person, you'll never get tired of it. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like sports. I'll never get tired of sports. I'll never get tired of waking up early and watching football all day on Sunday. And that's probably how you feel with music. Yeah. So I think for the people who ask this question and think like, you got to get tired at some point. Just think of the thing you love the most in life. Yeah. Do you ever get tired of that? Yeah. Mahalo. Okay, great question. Kaui Keala Kai Nani wants to know, um, that's my stepmom. Shout out to you. Hello. Oh, nice. uh, what legacy do you hope to leave for the next generation? Mm. What legacy do I hope to leave? I think I just want to be known for loving people. So I think was if people, um, they remember me, it's like, oh, he was the guy that I know that he, if, if they knew me personally, it's like, oh, he, man, he really loved. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be known for that. I want to make sure my kids also have that um, respect for our, for everyone, um, no matter where we are in life. It's like, man, just love people no matter where they're at. So I think that would be my... That's a good guess. answer. Yeah. yeah. It's just a great thing to be known for. It's love. Spreading aloha. Keeping it aloha. Mm -hmm. uh, next question comes from Mr. Underscore Kelsey. This person wants to know, what's your favorite meal I to eat when producing in your studio? Ooh, I know about it, Jordan. I recorded you. How you doing? Mm -hmm. My favorite snack is probably going to have to be... Um, so I live Papakalea, and there's a market down the road called Kamamalu Market. And they serve one of the best musubis ever. So Ooh. if you're like the musubi. That's a statement. There's an auntie that goes over there. She like crisps it up like 4 a.m. It's all ready to go. And they're... they're How's sold, the sauce? Sold Is it like plain? It got to have some sauce if it's the best. There's no sauce. So then how can, can it be the best? You can grab your shakati sauce and pour it. You can, do, you can make them <laughs> any kind. But it's just a simple, if you just want a simple sauceless musubi. <laughs> Nobody wants a simple sauceless musubi. <laughs> Do people want that? But I, I'm not really like a teriyaki guy or like the sauce on top. So my personal, and I even got like Joshua Tofi because I was okay. recording him. I was like, he's like, bro, would you get these musubis? It's like, and so I honestly, we always miss each other because he's always there grabbing musubis. <laughs> so if Joshua Tofi approves of the sauceless uh, musubi, I think that'd be pretty good. So the musubi, mm -hmm. Um, with no sauce. Okay. And this Sour Patch Kids mm, what? Lihing. Oh. Homemade. Okay. I don't I know just, if the patches, the, I don't know, they just, they probably just throw Lihing one on Yeah, top, they just the make The way that own. it is, like, that's my go-to. 
crack seed style. They got the like yeah, a, but it's in, it's in like a Ziploc bag. Oh, Ziploc. Oh, so, that is. And it's a snack size Ziploc bag. Oh, okay. So it's the perfect Portion like, control. <laughs> perfect little snack. Grab that. Usually, I usually grab like six to ten musubis. Just if anybody else is at the studio. Yeah. Oh, here. And then, go long. <laughs> <laughs> that, but what that, kind of sauce do you like on the musubi? Well, I I like the kind where you have a, uh you put it on top of the stove and you have like I don't I don't know if it's Yoshida or whatever like all mm. like stuff like that like teriyaki. Do you have a favorite yeah. musubi spot? <sighs> well, our neighbor in Hilo, Uncle Roy, makes the best bam musubi. Oh yeah. So a lot of homemade, and even my friend's mom, Auntie Dai, she makes such good tiny spam musubis. But if I had to buy one. Let me see. Where has it gone? I just had it yesterday at the what's that Musubi Cafe, but those are solid. But oh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite. There's oh. a place in Kohala Mall too. Downstairs. I, I, just, I went to there. Oh, it's well. more like it's more like uh, Japan style, like with the rice. Not the Musubi Cafe you're talking about. Is it called Musubi Cafe? The one right next to Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the one. that's the one. Yeah. Oh yeah, they have a really good like tuna Musubi. Okay, yeah, I didn't get that that's one. My fave. I, w- I was there. I got um, plate lunch at Pearls. Mm-hmm. Got meat jun and uh, barbecue chicken. Yeah. Then came back later in there, got the musubi. Yeah. It's so a good, good musubi. Stuff. There's a lot of good yeah. musubis out there. Yeah. We're not saying this is the best. Yeah, yeah. There are it's some all, really it's tasty all, ones. Yeah, preference. But yes. I'm, honestly, I don't mind a spam musubi from 7-Eleven. Yeah? It's so simple. Yeah. Why are you, why are you looking at me like that? You know? uh, <laughs> I like the spam. I th- I'm so used to the, the Kamala market one. The spam is a little more more crisp. But yeah, yeah. I think when it's soft, like to me, I feel like the 7-Eleven one's soft, but yeah, I don't know. I haven't gone in a while. Maybe That's true. They, maybe they... I'm an easy, I'm, I'm an easy food guy though. I like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So that, and then um, goldfish is also another. Oh, that's a good one. Cheddar. It's goldfish. But they have like the carton where... Yeah, like kind of those are dangerous. So I get I get the snack yeah. size. Okay, so you you're all about the snack <laughs> no, no, no. size. I get the snack size, um, the leaking one that I was talking about. And then I get the Costco. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Wholesale, yeah, yeah. I get the Costco size <laughs> goldfish and I go to town. Nice. And at the end of the day, I'm like, bruh, I should have got the snack size. <laughs> yeah. You ever tried uh, Lihimoy on the goldfish? Lihimoy on the goldfish? <gasps> I never. Maybe I can throw a couple of goldfish into the mushroom yeah, too. Yeah. And lihing. You know what the crazy thing is? It, like, it, it all sounds weird, like lihing on pizza or lihing. Like, I've tried random stuff with lihing mui and it's yeah. always good. I, I mean, don't think it, I've tried anything bad with lihing mui. When you're just eating a plate of food, you're already mixing all those foods that in your mouth. That is true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your mouth's just a blender. Yeah, <laughs> so it could work. Yeah. It could work really good. Yeah, try it. People try more things with lihing mui. Maybe, maybe not like rice. I don't, I don't know if I tried rice. I bet you that would be all right. The lihimu or rice? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't He's know. Like, what is show the show guy you. talking I mean, about? Maybe like lihimu <laughs> rice. Maybe show you not. Maybe not to show you. Yeah, maybe not show you. Because that'll be or this. Oh, maybe the sweet and salty. We never know. Yeah. Uh yeah. Maybe I'll try it one day. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question comes from Tiffany Thurston. This person wants to know what's your favorite OP picker song. Oh, Spiff. We call her Spiff. Oh, you know who this is? We have a band oh, called Zeo okay. Worship. Yeah. Yeah. She left a bunch of questions, but I could only nice. fit in one for her. My favorite OP picker song, I think the ones, my, my favorite one that we never played live is one called Make Up Your Mind. And I, I think I just like that one because it's kind of like a UB40 style. Mm. And that one I had like fake drums. I remember at the time, like, oh, it was a fun, like, melody, cool chords. Maybe songwriting back then wasn't as, um, you know, deep, but it was at the time, I think when I think of that song, maybe uh, between that song and this song called Meant to Be, mm-hmm. it's one that um, I'm, I'm a real chord guy and I like, I like theory and when things go out of the box and it's not a predictable chord. So that mm-hmm. song kind of has some of those, but still it's like simple island music. I think that's what OP Pickers, um, we did good at was like, it was under the label Simple Island Music, but then when you actually try to play it, there's a, there's a lot of licks and like, oh, I never know all these chords existed <laughs> in there. Um, but the ones that, that that were most popular, I like playing those too live because I can see the reaction from everybody. And I, I like seeing people who maybe just get blasted from like, oh, I'm just being reminded of, 
you know, when I was at Ice Palace and I was checking out that chick <laughs> and was singing this song. <laughs> there had so many stories of, bro, you don't know this, what this song did to me, my girlfriend. <laughs> It's like, all oh, right, I'm right <laughs> And so I, I like I like to just like hear stories for like yeah. what is everyone else's favorite song. But I think my personally my personal one to play, like if I were to just jam would be like Make Up Your Mind or Um Meant to Be. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. If you're listening to this and you're on YouTube, um leave a comment of your favorite OP picker song or if you have a really cool story so we can read about it. Yes. Yeah. I'll read it to you. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny when you say like a lot of songs back then were so simple and that is so true but they were so good yeah because they're like, categorized I back. as island music but it's not like jazz or anything and and it's not um, like deep meanings it's like yeah. blue light but when you, see, stand, but when you like, see an actual okay, chord chart of little OP picker stuff which <laughs> I don't know why I never made it before but I only recently made a bunch of OP picker chord charts mm-hmm. that I didn't share with anyone so if anyone wants I can give it to you <laughs> But like, there's been a lot of um, wrong chord charts out there. So like, I'll just make one that I know is the right and the right words. And so um, maybe if you have anybody asking, I can put together a link or something. Mm-hmm. But I, st- I started doing that with the songs because just in case yeah. like, if someone asks for it or, you know. <laughs> but, I, but as I'm writing, I'm looking at it, I'm like, this isn't no two chord song, you know. Yeah. And some of, the, some of it, when I was listening to a lot of other music, because I, I grew up listening to like, rock too and like real different kinds of of styles that's definitely not island music but there's all these weird measure changes where like it goes from this to this so i tried to implement that in the simple island music and you know listening to a lot of shredder guitar players Mm. how do i incorporate that i think i play more controlled now than when i first started but there's definitely a lot of licks in there like oh that's cool that at the age i was it's like a lot of people like to learn those solos. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. I think I just ride in this wave of gratitude most of my life of if I can inspire someone or like when someone comes, like I started playing ukulele because of you. Mm. It's like, awesome. Just keep, keep keep it up, man. That's, it's so interesting how um, we're talking about simple stuff and you're talking about all the chords and progression. I was just yeah. thinking of the lyrics. <laughs> I was thinking like, yeah. n- literally the, top, the words are 96 degrees <laughs> in the shade, <laughs> red hot. <laughs> like it's yeah. like these so, such simple songs, like lyrics. I miss yeah. you, girl. I miss you much. I mean, look I miss at your me in touch. my song. Where it's just make ooh. me say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole chorus. You ooh. make me say. Ooh. What's the count of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I think about that all the time when I'm listening to old, older songs. I'm just like, how is this so simple but just so beautiful and timeless? Yeah. Some, that's I, I think that's I think a lesson. timeless. That's that's what I want to make music. Yeah. Like, you can listen to it later later down the road and you're like I'm proud of that or like this still is it's something still yeah. a banger people are still yeah. wanting to to learn it so yeah I don't want to be too trendy where I stay in a certain decade mm-hmm. but of course you never know what music's going to turn into yeah I think yeah a lot of songs in Hawaii are timeless yeah you got you got a couple songs in there that are timeless thank you thank you yeah uh, next question comes from Sean N. Eloke or Sean N. Loke, something like that. I don't know how the words are supposed to be split up. Sorry. But I know Shana. this is, this is um, a great follower. I know she always, I see her name around not a lot. A lot. Uh, this person asks, my teenage crush, what's your favorite thing to do with your ohana oh. in your free time? <laughs> <laughs> it's like my teenage crush, um, exclamation point, laughy fit emoji. <laughs> And then what's your favorite thing to do with your ohana in your free time? Oh, wow. I told you, you don't, you don't, <laughs> before Roman from Koloe Kai, there was Imua Garza from OP Pickers. <laughs> Man, there, there were some wild times where I'd like, we'd walk in the mall and there'd be people like following us, hiding behind like <laughs> the appliances. And then like, I go, go up to them. <laughs> you know? I, I think my, my, my phrasing that I say nowadays is like, I guess growing up, I used to be a heartthrob, but now my heart just throbs. <laughs> I never get that check. Um, I'm at that age now. So yeah, you made you made people's uh, uh, knees give out. Now your knees give out. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just love to be there with my family. Right now, my son is my oldest son. He's 16, so I'm trying to hang out with him as much as I can. Get to love the things that they all love. Mm-hmm. And so right now, it's he likes to go to the gym and. At 45, come on back. 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm training with my brother and him. And of course, I, of course I, I, uh, my results aren't as much because those, that Costco goldfish box. The musubis, the sour musubis. patch kids. <laughs> but I still like to just uh, uh, do things that they love. So mm -hmm. my other son, my youngest son is into music. Mm -hmm. And so he loves to play piano and he just enjoys time together. Like I think all, all of them do, but there are certain um, kids as they get older, like okay, this one really values mm -hmm. time spent, some value this other thing. So, so trying to figure out what their, their love language is. Yeah, yeah, and so sweet. every Thursday I've been taking him and just go eating at one of our favorite spots and just finding out more about, you know, as they grew up, you know, what are some, what's, what's happening in school. Mm -hmm. just, just trying to get to know them more and now he's going to turn 10 this uh Double in a digits. couple of days so we're going to surprise him and do something and then uh, with my daughter she's she's uh kind of liking guitar right now but mm -hmm. not acoustic like electric she wants to rock oh, out. like her she wants to rock out yeah and so I, I do love that about that my kids are into music um and they all sing but I, i'm trying to like not force it to mm -hmm. But like in yeah behind the scenes you're like come on but I will love yes it, love I will it, be there it. and help you with all your but even still they're taking lessons from um like my youngest is taking piano lessons from someone else mm -hmm. just because it is it is different if I teach them but I was like I'll help you with your homework um, but just like we send them to school mm -hmm. otherwise we can we tried homeschool that <laughs> that didn't really work too well mm -hmm. um, but anytime but right now to. Um, we love going on Sundays to, after church, we go to my parents' house and we just hang out with them. Awesome. And um, yeah, have some good times. There's music there and food and I think just a good, a good meal and music mm -hmm. together is always like super fun together. I mean, the life does need to be more complicated than that. Yeah. It's the simple things. But I am this season, this year, I'm really trying to be more intentional mm. with each one of my, even my wife and all the kids. It's like, what, what am I saying yes to that I'm also saying no to, to the family? So mm. I think I'm being, I'm taking things as they come. And then like, instead of just saying yes to everything, I'm trying to like really guard mm -hmm. what that looks like as a dad, as a husband, mm -hmm. and just to be there. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that too. Especially with, with how fast they're growing. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I want to be there every single moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do love the music and, and music can get like, I think the balance of family and music for a lot of musicians, cause we work late at night. Um, and then even, even for me, like when I'm recording guys, they have nine to five jobs. And so they can't record till later. Mm -hmm. And, um, I end up doing a lot of these really late, you know, past midnight, almost all the time. And like. So trying to trying to figure out what that looks like for me, mm -hmm. um, healthy balance and and for it to be um, you know be around. I also want to be known that I was around a lot as a dad, and that and at the times that I am home, that I'm not on my phone, I'm not um, wasting time. Like I'll just do stuff with the kids and mm -hmm. and be present when I'm there. That's awesome. Yeah. I was going to ask, how do you balance it all? Because you're super busy. And like, I, I barely know you, but one thing I knew about you is that you're really busy. <laughs> yeah. And I could just tell, like, I could just tell you're, you're a busy guy. You're a lot of people want to work with you. Um, but you care so much about your family and um, you value the, the quality time because that's a, one of their love languages. Yeah. So how do you balance everything? Well, I, I have a little crew as well. So they help me. Um, I have a couple of studio engineers that can be there if I can't be there. Um, I have my brother-in-law, he, he intakes the projects. Mm. And then I basically wake up and see a calendar of my whole schedule. And so, but I am my own boss. So I can say, hey, can we block out this? Can we block out this? So I think I, I, I have to look ahead and that's the way that I can balance. Like I know that when I don't look ahead and I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that gig or I can do that. Um, I'm like, wow, that's every single night this week. Or I said yes without even looking. So I think that intentionality piece of mm -hmm. um, looking ahead with my wife, I'm like, okay, here's, here's the month. Instead of like, here's today. Mm -hmm. And then, wow, I didn't know that. I think that happens a lot 
of for musicians are like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then, um, cause even right now I'm working on like 40 plus projects and that's 40 different bands, 40 different projects. Even if they're only doing one song, that's 40 songs, but most of them are like full projects. Mm -hmm. And so to, you feel the pressure of having to work with them and then like, okay, next session, just get with, um, get with Glenn and he'll help you schedule the next time. But sometimes like with all the projects that I'm working on, it might be some weeks, it might be like, okay, we got our opening next month. Um, so that pressure of like, oh, I wanna get them in sooner. Um, but it depends on what the project is and like the deadlines of it. I think mm -hmm. we kind of make it work. Uh, but the balance of that, um, we, I mean, I, I'm on staff at my church too. And so I think that's a huge part of me being grounded in my faith and having that as like the, the foundation and then everything else kind of flows from that. Like if I feel like if I love God the most and then I love, like that's, that's how I can love my wife the best. Hmm. And then if I love my wife the best, that's how I can love my kids the best. And so I just kind of like trickles trickle down. down yeah. yeah, Awesome, I love that. Uh, this next question, since you bring that up, it's a perfect segue, is from Lori underscore Yans. What is your God story? My God story, well, um, talking about like the camp that we went to for Young Life, I feel like Young Life really opened up my eyes to um, like get off myself because I did have like a lot of growing up, um, you know, you see the accolades, you see other musicians and you want that. And even though um, I was humbled, there, there was a piece of me that's like, I want to, I want to be like John Mayer. I want to play, you know, these big stadiums. Um, and so I had a lot of, I had not a lot, but I had some of that in, in myself. And my parents would always take me to church growing up um, in Utah and Texas, but it was more like their thing where I would just show up and I mean, I was super young, mm -hmm. but we always, we always grew, um, went to church. And then I think it was when we, I went to Young Life and then we came out from that camp, that camp like transformed my world where they had a time where they said, okay, this is like the last day of camp. And then we were, you know, activities, having fun. I think a lot of that was disguised as like, we're gonna tell you about the Lord. <laughs> and um, it is fine. And then when they, when they were telling me about that, like, I think that was the first like personal time where I felt the Lord and like speak to me and remind me that he's like with me at all times. Cause they said, okay, we're actually gonna have you guys go. This is the last day of camp. We're gonna have you guys sit outside into the middle of like Arizona with these mountains. And that was like my turning point, I feel like, because they says, come back in like an hour, just have solitude, just you and like being out there. And there was no, it wasn't forcing anything. It was just like, just be with the Lord. And like, if he's, and I think at that moment, it was one of the first few times that I shut off everything else. Cause I always had music playing. I always had things and it was, it was like my first time kind of just being in solitude. And that was where I felt the most like, oh, you're with me. You're, you're like with me right now. It's like, I'm gonna serve you for the rest of my life. Like that was the moment where I, I was like, I'm not gonna do anything on my own anymore. It's like, all the glory is gonna go to you. And whatever I do, like this gift that you've given me, I'm gonna use it for your glory. And so um, when I came back, I like jumped in my parents' Bible study group and they were going through this series called Purpose Driven Life. And that book and that series and watching the videos, it was like, man, I'm, I'm made for this. And how do I how do I use this gift that I've been blessed with to bless you back and to take all the glory off of me? And so um, there was a scripture: we are, "For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do." And so that was like the scripture at the time. I was like, "You've prepared in advance. You already knew that I would be here at this time. That I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward with this." And then literally like that same month, the church asked me if I would be considered like an interim worship leader. Mm. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'm not really worship leader material, but I'll, I'll do it. And so I ended up jumping on, I was 18 at the time. Um, and I was the interim for like, <laughs> uh, like three years. <laughs> it was like, just like six months or something, yeah. like three years. And that really like um, started my 
like crafting, chiseling off some of the character issues that I didn't know I had and meeting with pastors. Like I really wanted to do this life right. And so like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm about to get married. Fast forward the tape. Um, I wanna be a dad. I wanna be a dad that's also known for like loving the Lord and that my kids know that whenever they lose hope that they know like, this, this is something that dad had and, and for it to be, um, yeah, I just know over, over the years, like the Lord has really been, had his hand on our family mm -hmm. and just, we can see it throughout all the prayers that we've had. And so, yeah, knowing from, from healings to, it's like, man, we, we were praying for this and look, the Lord listened and this is what, this is what, um, how he responded. And sometimes it's not always how we want, but it's like, Mm -hmm. We don't understand right now, but um, yeah, I, my my trust is going to be put in him. So that's kind of my my story. Yeah, awesome. I, I saw this reel recently. It's like when I think it might have been Morgan Freeman saying it. Maybe it's from a movie. It's like when uh, you you ask God for patience, He's not going to give you patience. He's going to give you the, an opportunity to be patient. Yeah, when you need strength, He's not going to make you strong. He's going to give you an opportunity to be yeah. strong. So like you just had all those opportunities presented to you, but you knew when to take it, yeah? Yeah. And you knew, you, uh, you knew that that feeling, because some, some people could take it as, but interpret it as the universe, something else, maybe yeah. just their mind talking to themselves, but you, you took it as the Lord speaking to you. And yeah. then you just knew from that, that point on, like, this is your path. Even like marrying my wife. Yeah. It's like, I was, I was actually doing- Seems these, like a common theme in your life yeah. is what I'm saying. Like I was, I was doing devotions that day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, of course I miss all, I miss doing devotions at that time that I was, but I was like, okay, Lord, can you speak to me right now? Like, and I, I really just opened up and I was like, it was in Psalms and he was talking about like, the Lord's going to um, give me the desires of my heart. And then all of a sudden, like my wife, she just popped in. I was like, oh, and it was like a, it was like a turning point too at that moment. I'm like, got it. <laughs> so okay. And then 18, 18 years later, I mean, we're. I know it's not just from my own like my own will of. I know that we were partners together, and we're such a awesome pair. Um, and she's like such a such an awesome wife and mom mm -hmm. and worship leader too. She's so both of us. We are the music directors at, at our church and yeah. Yeah, just I think without without having that critical piece in our life of the Lord, like I feel like we we wouldn't we definitely would have failed a lot more. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so well, grateful for His grace on our life. It's a solid foundation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you and your wife created Zeal Music Worship. Zeal Music. Zeal Music. Yeah. Zeal Music and the church, but that is that connected. To your church? So Zeo Music, yeah. Zeo is, is the name Zeo, of, my, is of my son. So he was our firstborn. Oh. And just a little history behind that. When we had, um, when I was a home studio, I we, we were inside his bedroom. And then we ended up, uh, it was just hit the baby room and it had, you know, he was, he was just born, had his blue letters, Zeo, Z-E-O, which, which um, the name of Zeo, it means, to bubble over in joy, to have like a fervent love for others. Nice. I'm like, that's in awesome. In what language? In um, Hebrew. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, or in Greek, it, in Greek, sorry. In Greek. Okay, was it, is that in the Bible? It's a biblical yeah. thing, yeah. Oh, so okay. when it, it was like Paul in Romans when he was talking about um, how you need to have a, a fervent love for others. And so we took cool. that, that word, zeal, and that was like on the wall. And then as you got a little bit older, I'm like, hey babe, I really want to make music, but I, I don't want to always have to go to other places. Like, can I start to have a home studio here? And she's like, sure. <laughs> Cause she's a musician too, so she yeah. gets it. She's like, I know this is your passion, like just, let's do it. And then um, as we're taking out all the baby equipment, it's like, oh, but we're gonna have to get rid of his crib. And we had a small place then. It's like, so then I put some acoustic panels and then I was about to take off the lettering. I was like, no, I like that. And I feel like this is uh, also our, our purpose to love people. So let's just keep it up there. And then mm. so that so people would come in, they'd be like, oh, we're gonna go to the Zeo studio. Oh, and then that cool. just kind of um, kept going. And then I ended up getting a place behind 
um, behind the church where the old Tower Records is at Kahala Mall. So that's where I'm at now for the past 10 years, probably. Mm. And um, what was the question? <laughs> Uh, no, I was just yeah, interested about the oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Tiff and I, we started that because we had a lot of family projects because mm -hmm. her, fa her whole family is all musical. And then I have some music musicians too on my side mm -hmm. of the family. So we're like, how about these products that we really want to um, invest in on our side and go, like we can just have a little record label. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we started where I just wanted to, um, I think like, I, if you know who Isaac is, I Z I K. Oh so yeah, I like he's him. Got in, um, he his has... first his first two albums was I I did that. Okay. But he was one. I was like, man, you're you're so talented, and I feel like you need to do music. But I think like at the time, budget was a thing, so we're like, okay, hey, that's gonna be like our first label thing, where mm -hmm. where the ones that we really feel that we want to pour into, and so. And Akilana's on the, the label too, mm -hmm. and so we're just like friends. We're like, how how can we? Um, continue to make music with people that need to make music but maybe at the time mm -hmm. they weren't ready so we're like let's just do it <laughs> so we started that Zaya music and then um yeah and then Zaya, Zaya worship is like a little wing so we have mm -hmm. two sides so Zaya music there's like the regular label and then there's like a worship side of the label so there's um we have a couple other like church projects that we have over there. Mm. But Zaya Worship is uh, my friend, like all good friends from high school. Um, Kamu Singh, he's actually my best friend and he works with Zaya Music as well. Tiffany Thurston, who mm -hmm. is um, on there and my wife. So us four, we're, we call ourselves Zaya Worship. Mm. And we, we had a couple of nominees at the Hoku Awards this last couple of years. We opened up at the Hoku's, we sang last year for the Hokus and um, really we, we felt a calling to put Wadalo Hawaii back into the, the church, like the contemporary style mm -hmm. church. And so, um, and we just started simple, like let's let's knee now some of these. And we had um, Kamu's sister to do that. And she's really big on, on Olalo. And so we wanted to make sure that when someone else is listening to it, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, that, that makes sense. And it's not just like a literal translation. So we just started with like popular songs that the church is already doing. And then we're like, we put our Hawaiian twist on it as well. And then we did, um, so we got, we did a Christmas album. We've been doing these Christmas shows too. It's mm -hmm. been really fun um, to have that as well. And then we did kind of more of acoustic kind of album that we recently came out with. In, in so Hawaii? It's in Hawaii, yeah. Oh, so cool. it's like it's like half Hawaiian. It's yeah. Probably like more than half of it's in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but three of us are Komema students too. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You're like, ah, we got we got your Hawaiian back in. So. Yeah. So did did you produce that one? Um, what is the one where um, Kimi is singing in Hawaiian? Uh, I the think the lullaby album. Was that uh, it's, uh, three uh, three little birds? Be happy. Was is that the or three little birds? Yeah. What? That's what it is. Dealer Birds with um, did, the green. The green, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I did, you, you I did, did that, that whole project. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, that makes sense with the Hawaiian. Yeah, and so that one with, um, but that's, that's a different thing though, yeah. But that, that one with Kimie and Joshua Tofi and Paula was on it, Anuhea, um, Kalani Pella. It was like an awesome, uh, um, was there any more? But that was the album that got nominated for the Grammy. Mm -hmm. And so that was cool to find that out too. Yeah. And that one, that one, um, we just started. We're like, hey, let's just do like one or two songs. I forget how much we were gonna commit to. And I was like, but what about this? Oh yeah, so Capenna jumped on too. Mm -hmm. And um, we're like, let's just get a collaboration album. So that was super fun for the for because she was being having her first baby, Ome mm -hmm. She's like, I want to make a lullaby album. Oh okay, it's really great. Yeah, yeah. But although Three Little Birds sometimes that might wake the baby up. Yeah. <laughs> Every little thing. <laughs> oh, that's not, not a lullaby album. Yeah, that is not a lullaby album. <laughs> but I did like the Hawaiian in that. That's why I, I, yeah. I was thinking of that. Awesome. Yeah, she had a few people um, translate that. I think Kalani Pet was one of them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, one of we went to the same big school. island. Yeah, lovely. Kalani Pet. Yeah. But he graduated, I didn't. Um, okay, so the same person, this is the final question. Ask. Uh, when you and Kahu Kiha are going to teach about Christianity in Hawaii again, what's so good? Oh, yeah, that, that time mm -hmm. um, he s spoke at the hymn conference. Yeah, and then I just played, I played um, the Queen song. 
Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Next time, uh, Uncle Kia, you let me know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go let him know. Reach out. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, mahalo everybody for the social media fan questions. Make sure you leave them for our next guest, and maybe a question will make it on the podcast. Um, there's some some good questions there. Yeah. All right, so at, at this point, I like to ask all of my guests the same thing yeah. uh, based on the word aloha and based on the name of the podcast. I like to ask people, what does it mean uh, to keep it aloha in your life? How do you keep it aloha in your life? How do I keep it aloha in my life? I feel like what I was sharing earlier about loving people, mm-hmm. it's like, how do you love them even when they're porcupines, <laughs> when they're a little spiky and you're like, oh, they stink a little bit. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> That one's hard to love. Or how do you love someone? How do you keep it aloha when someone cuts you off on the freeway, doesn't let you in? For me, a big pet peeve is like when I let someone in, I'm like, oh, come on, go. And they don't, they don't do this. I I'm hate like, that so much. Pet peeve. Yeah, unlocked. But yeah. I don't want to fight them. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, that, that just happened to me this yeah. morning and I had to calm myself like, down. What is, what is happening right now within me? So I feel like mm-hmm. if I can get control of that, I don't blow up, but I'm like, Oh man, that really rubs me wrong. Yeah, um, I get you. How do I keep it aloha? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a constant, like a daily reminder that what it means to keep it aloha is like to always check yourself on your motives, on um, why are you ignoring this person? Why are you not trying to make it right? So to to really have that sense of um, urgency mm-hmm. of, oh, I need to make this right quick <laughs> mm-hmm. like don't let my anger settle before i go to bed it's like how do i how do i control this whether it's anger or whatever it might be it's like i want to i want to not have a list a blacklist of people and just have it be like okay that's something that i need to work on and that's something that i need to forgive even if they're mm-hmm. not going to forgive me it's like otherwise i won't be able to move on so mm-hmm. that's how i keep it aloha always Open the door for kupuna, like make sure that you're honoring generations and especially those above us that we can malama everybody and um, that we take it even that step further when we, even when we don't want to. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, actually go, go get some food and, and sit down with the homeless person, <laughs> you know? Yeah. How, do you, how do you just go out of your, your boundaries of... Ah, that's not really me. It's like, well, make it you. Like, mm-hmm. make that be a new part of your, um, what you need to do to keep it aloha. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful answer. Yeah, mahalo. Nani. mahalo. Uh, I wanna know when you were in Kamehameha or growing up, um, were did you always feel the aloha, or did you have times where maybe you didn't aloha yourself, maybe? People treated you poorly before you went up to play with a Kalo Man guy. Because <laughs> uh, you said, you know, you were more Ilikea and like, yeah. you know, Kamehameha is known to be the Hawaiian school. So, yeah. And believe it or not, I'm almost half Hawaiian <laughs> if you round up. But um, yeah, definitely being lighter skinned growing up in the islands. Um, I didn't really feel a lot of that pressure wise. I think because I was OP Vickers. And there was a little bit different um, viewpoint on mm-hmm. me. Like I'm more the ukulele guy yeah. compared to being the white kid. Um, but I, I could definitely, um, there were times where it's like, hey, holly boy, you know, mm. I get that kind of, I was like, and it just doesn't feel right. It's like, but you don't even look how little, like your yeah. features. Actually, me. white's my least, but I look at the yeah. most. That's kind of yeah, it's it. interesting. My my. Yeah, I'm Hawaiian, Chinese, Spanish, Portuguese, Mexican, yeah. and like a little like white. Yeah, but my, I see the Portuguese. Yeah, but my my dad is uh, he's like half Spanish, Mexican too. Mm-hmm. So there's like the he's like the fair. His his dad was like full Spanish, but it's well. like fair skin. So that's kind of where I get a lot of the. Um, I mean, my last name is Garza, mm-hmm. Armando Garza. <laughs> and so, um, like I remember when I when I was in. I came here for summer school, but I was in the mainland and then we would come for summer. I went to summer school, kind of a Papakolea area, of course, over there. That's where we live now too. <laughs> mm-hmm. But at the time I was like, I remember going on a swing and this kid was like, hey, Holly boy. And then like came up to me and he punched me on the back and was a 
uh, was about to um, beat me up, but my brother was right next to them. So we ended up, I don't know what he did, but I, I escaped from that. And uh, my brother protected me during that time. And uh, I remember like feeling like, wow, what? how come so much hate? Mm. But of course I wasn't from there and like new kids. So growing, so going to Kamehameha, I think if I didn't have music, um, I probably would have gotten, gotten more, but I, I was such, um, I think I tried to carry aloha too because my parents are, are very much like that. And my ohana is like that. Like they're very aloha. So we, they always have people stay at the house. It's like, oh, we're going to take care of it. We're going to love these people for a while. Okay. And how do, how do I, like I, I just watch from seeing how they act and how they were upbringing to me. So even when people were kind of getting a little mouthy with me, I just, they knew, they eventually knew that I love them. It's like, uh, that's funny, but I kind of sore a little bit. <laughs> it's like, ah, right, but let's let's go do this, or let's go do that, and I kind of changed the subject. Yeah. So, um, I just tried to get involved as much as I could in in what I loved, and that was music. And so, I think I think having music kind of saved me from all the bully stuff mm-hmm. that probably normal people would experience if they were coming from the mainland. And yeah, yeah. But from fourth grade on, I was I was here. Yeah, yeah. Never left. So really, a lot of most of my upbringing is is here. I kind of remember the other Utah and Texas, but not too much. So mm-hmm. I was like, let me just live Aloha, and if um, people don't like them, then that's on them. That's on them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ke Aloha Mahone, a couple episodes ago, he um, lived in Papakalea. His tutu would always tell him like, Hawaiian isn't gonna have a look one day. So mm-hmm. the only way to tell, you know, who's Hawaiian and I is through action. And yeah. through Aloha. So yeah. it, it's cool that you bring that up because that's something that he was saying. I heard too that like yeah. back in the days, if you're like you're a Hawaiian, if you are loyal to the king. Mm. And so like if you had that respect of like, oh, this is the, this is the king of. Yeah. You know, then to when you have that perspective, like, okay, I, I value the people, the culture, like what's so loving people. Like you can be Hawaiian at heart mm-hmm. and to me, because especially a lot of people in on Hawaiian homes, there's probably some that doesn't qualify for the quantum. It's like, um, it's like, man, what's gonna happen years down if they don't change that law? It's like that's their home, mm-hmm. that's where they grew up. So I get a little bit worried about some of that times too, because even with my family yeah. too, like where um, as it trickles down, it gets a little bit more less, and you're like. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I think the blood quantum things is an outdated thing, and it, it seems like it, it's gonna go away at some point. Like it has to. Like, yeah, it's just not realistic to yeah keep it. But even my kids, man, there's there's so many different races. Because mm-hmm. I'm a whole bunch. My wife is a whole Mixed bunch. Mixed plate, yeah. Yeah, she's like Chamorro Native American. Oh, Chamorro! I didn't know yeah. that. Wow, that's like cool. Guam, yeah, yeah, and. And yeah, she's Welch too. But like, there's a whole bunch of. What if we create this new nationality or ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, called just the mixed plate? Like yeah. it's, you know how they have that. Um, what is it like Esperanto? Yeah, where it's like kind of like all the languages. Like I mean, it's a lot easier than yeah. writing down all your nationalities. Yeah, exactly. Or you could put Hawaiian mixed plate. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know, like they you got the, the Hawaiian the Pacific benefits, Islanders, yeah. <laughs> Hispanic, Asian. Just go mixed plate. <laughs> mixed plate is the etc. Yeah, and then under, maybe under the mixed plate, you could have like the subcategories, like the meat jun, uh, rice, yeah. chinkatsu, kalua pig, boy. Spamu subi. Spamu subi. Yeah. <laughs> That would be way more fun than these boring little surveys and stuff. Yeah, or guess their race. <laughs> guess their race. <laughs> be People will be bad. Name, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like that game. I I I, I like that stuff. But but I love I love the look of like like my kids. Like they're so unique looking. And uh, yeah, it's the like, ambiguous oh, look, right? Yeah, you're, you're so many things. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> what are you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and especially down the line, like. A generation away, like what's what are they gonna look like? Yeah, that's in, it's interesting, but I do feel like like if you're mixed, you definitely have a a different look that's mm-hmm. 
I, I like the guessing game of like, what do you think mm -hmm. I am? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite part about being mixed is I can always blame a certain bloodline for what I do. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, sorry. I talk so much. I'm Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. But like, oh, my bad. Oh, I'm Hawaiian. You know, yeah. like, oh, it's, the it's, it's my, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the Korean anger. My bad. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like you can just do that stuff yeah. and it's, it's funny. Um, one thing I want to know about you is what what do you admire the most about yourself? What I admire the most about myself, <laughs> I feel like very humble, and um, I think saying that also isn't that weird, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> I mean to say, you're I really don't want to have like a false humility. But, but that's why I'm asking this question because you, you're yeah. allowed to answer like that. So I think I like that I'm on that people know me um, the same. Uh, where I'm, whether I'm off stage or on stage, I feel like I'm the same person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't try to put up a fake or a front when it comes to like who you think I am. And I think the reason that I keep getting more people in to like the studio, because I don't advertise or do anything, but I've never like not had work for the last, since I first started. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have a website to have a website, but mm -hmm. really just the word of mouth, the like being known for feeling at home, like having people come and like, oh, I just feel so comfortable here. Like, I think that's a trait that I, I don't want to ever lose. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the hard yeah, work. And, and to, being, to being humble, I feel like mm -hmm. that's, a, that's something that I've seen people get success and then not stay humble. And you're like, man, that's going to fall pretty quick. Mm hmm um, so to be known for that, I feel like that's a, a good trait that I don't that I want to make sure that also um, comes down and passes down to my mm -hmm. kids too. Definitely, and you've just built this undeniable stack of proof of about who you are and what you do, the things that you're capable of. And you don't even need to go tell everybody, "Hey, I'm this awesome, <laughs> award-winning, nominated person." We already know. Oh, so it ma it makes it it makes it easy for you to be humble because we can just brag about you. Oh, <laughs> what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? I'm a big Office fan. <laughs> oh, it's great! The choice. Office, great fan I, to be a, a fan of. I I really only watch TV for The Office. <laughs> so when I do watch TV, and that's like our favorite like date night with my wife and I is like we'll just throw on any random episode. Michael Scott's got to probably be in there. Mm -hmm. But um, I followed them for a long time. Yeah. And that's one of the shows you don't I'm have like, to watch. This is order. like the best purchase I've ever purchased <laughs> in my life is buying the whole, like the seasons, all the seasons. Oh, you have like a DVD? Like or a complete, no, no. It's um, like I bought it on iTunes. Oh, okay. I did have okay. the DVD collection. Okay. Um, but that's, yeah. I don't really quote a lot of Office stuff, but that is one of my favorite, like. That and some ice cream, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a vibe, yeah. office and ice cream. What, do you have a specific episode that you really like? Or like for certain moments? Um, I just love the whole inappropriate behavior of like Michael Scott. Yeah. Um, there's, oh, remember the one where they had to play the, the game when they had stuff on top of their head? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, I think Dwight's trying to get it. And he's like, uh, Michael's like, no, come on, just, just give it to him. And then Pam's like... Based on stereotypes <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> I do not agree upon. Yeah. He's like, um, I'm a bad driver. And he's like, I'm a, I'm a woman? <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, Asian. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, there's so many good ones. I was watching oh, one recently. So. Um, it was when he's, he's uh, they're learning the CPR. <laughs> oh, yeah. Staying alive. Like, oh, man. He's like, oh, just Bro. go to the song, Staying Alive. First, I was afraid. <laughs> I was and, petrified. And then uh, Mindy. So <laughs> yeah, they did like Night the Roxbury yeah. stuff. But yeah. Oh, that was a good, yeah. that's one of the best scenes ever. It's I, a fun, I like, love that scene. no matter how late it is, and I'll, I'll sometimes fall asleep too. I'm like, yeah. I'll just watch an, a random episode. <laughs> that's so. that's awesome. Be, that's always a, um, a good sign of somebody who's cool and they, like, they, they can hang around is if they like The Office. Yeah. If you do not like the That's office, my kind of humor though, is the office. yeah. But if you don't like the office, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, I I just feel like it's one of those things universally like. It, yeah. How can you hate on the office? There's it's it's so perfect. But even Michael Scott's like, if I if I do a reboot and shoot another version of the office in today's world, it's like yeah, I'll get yeah, canceled. Nothing can happen. So <laughs> just enjoy it from before. <laughs>
Like, and we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true with a lot of things. Yeah. I, I see a lot of old stuff and I'm just like, oh, that wouldn't yeah. get by you these. Got days. away with a lot there, buddy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it was just not that it was it was okay. I think it was just more acceptable back then. Like people yeah. didn't really I, I, I guess I can't speak I for I think there was no sounding did. board for people to ex- express their feelings to. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, that's just what's on TV. That's who we're going to watch. Yeah. Huh. But now they have, uh, you can share all your comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. And now Another co- fun fact is I, I, I grew up skateboarding and I had a pretty, um, I was pretty serious about skateboarding one time. And I, and I wish I had the footage to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> But my camera, uh, we ended up getting like almost mobbed. This gang came and like took my camera and like stole it. And it was uh, in the middle of like a school we were skating at. Likely so story. Like, yeah. But in, uh, <laughs> in one of the OP Picker videos, Old Fashioned Touch, the song that I sang earlier, there is a couple clips of me skateboarding. I did like oh, okay. a backside flip, 360 flip, but... It's like ah, this junk terrain. Yeah. Anyway, it's in my head that I used to skate a lot. The 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 video had like the Indy nine hundreds and the yeah. you know the crazy half pipe. But on my stuff. skating crew, <laughs> yeah, back me up. Back me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know. Comment below if he was actually good at skating. <laughs> Jordan, Dominic, Shane. <laughs> That's awesome. So after all that you've done so far, and like you're right about to touch forty, like. You still have so much more to accomplish. At this point, though, what would you say you're most proud of? I'm most proud of my family. I think the me making that choice to say to to have Tiff be my wife and all the kids like they're definitely my most treasured um, in my life. And and I'm also very proud of my parents and the life that they gave me and my grandma. If it wasn't for my grandma, um, my na- we call her Nanan, I, I probably wouldn't be doing this as well because she's the one who opened up. The re- There's this guy playing at, at Pro Ridge Mall and he was playing ukulele on the side. And I was like 10 at the time. And we were walking around Pro Ridge she's like, oh, there's that guy. Go play him that new Kaviko solo you learned. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I was like, I'm not going to walk up to him and say, hey, give me that. Let me play. And so she said, I'll buy you a Kamako ukulele. I said, when? After this? I was like, what? I said, yeah, let's go. So she really forced me. And then when I, um, so I said, hey, my sorry, my, my grandma really wants me to just play this. She said, she's going to give me a, a Kamako ukulele. How old were you? I was like 10. Okay. 10. And so um, he gave me the ukulele and I, I was playing. And then a little crowd started to form. And then there was a producer there, um, Freddie Von Perez, and he was starting this new project called Ukulele Stylings 2. And so he came to me, he's like, hey, I'm looking for, it's called Hidden Treasures, um, players that aren't known. It's like, I feel like you would be really great for this. And so that was the first start of me walking into a studio. Mm. So if it wasn't for my grandma saying, go grab that guy's ukulele over there and go play. <laughs> like, oh, it's so embarrassing. But I ended up doing it. I got a kamaku ukulele <laughs> <laughs> after that. And um, so mahalo, Nanan. I'm so very proud of you and the legacy that you also um, leave behind with all of her kids mm-hmm. of loving the Lord. And so the whole family, the Garza Ohana. Um, yeah, very grateful, very proud to be in this family. Awesome. That is such a cool story. That's what happens when you just uh, have some from somebody <laughs> to just push you a little extra. Yeah, because you know? I didn't want to. Yeah, but sometimes we need if that. She was be that like, little push. Um, there's no way I'm gonna walk yeah. up to this guy and say, "Let me, let me shred for you." Yeah. yeah. Same with the podcast. I didn't want to do a podcast. Yeah. My my team from Hawaii Verse. I'll give you one of these after. Oh yeah. Um, they told me to do it, and I didn't want to. And they're like, "No, we got it. We'll set you up, and you just go th- figure out what you're gonna talk about." And here we are, two years later. Awesome. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, we need that support system. Keep it up. Yeah, mahalo. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're coming to the end of the podcast. I just got to know, what is your life hack? My life hack, I think everything that I was talking about, anything in the pigeon way would be no grumble, be humble. <laughs> yes. Of To have to be ha 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 And the verse it, in my head is, um, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but 
in humility, lift others above yourself. And that's in Philippians. And so I really want that to like, and that's why the, the industry that I'm in, I'm like constantly lifting up everyone else above my shoulders. Like, here, jump over that wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. Stand on my shoulders. And um, I think when I, when I can do that, and then when, then when people have such great humility and, and are humble, when they reach the, the peak of where they need to be at, they won't fall. Like it'll be, now nah, I've, I've walked through a lot of things and I've, I've come with a humble heart and that's how I'm going to um, approach things with gratitude all the time for me. I'm always like harping on my kids, like say thank you after every little thing, even if, even if you don't mean it. It's like mm -hmm. people, people do something small. It's like, oh, thank you so much. Thanks uncle, thank you auntie. And coming with a um, heart of gratitude and heart of humility, I think is going to, and a heart of thankfulness is like a way to, it's a great life hack for me of how to stay um, grounded mm -hmm. and rooted, but not let people step over, step, step on you mm -hmm. all the time, but like- The balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you just, how do, how do you want to, like, how do you want to be known in this mm -hmm. life? And for me, it's like, I love the Lord. I love my family. And I was very humble and peaceful. Like there was never any stress. I, mm -hmm. all, you know, I always enjoyed being with him. And it was just like, we never had to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. It's like when, you, like when you go to lunch with your friends and it's like, you can be there all day. Yeah, you know? exactly. All the filters come yeah. off, you know, worry about oh, what I got to talk, what I got to ask, how do I get this conversation going? It's just so natural. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. You know, in sync is getting back together. Um, we got a couple other reunion, band reunions. You think OP pickers will ever? <laughs> so OP pickers are playing. Like I, um, we're playing at. Oh, you guys play some, some events, some yeah. concerts. Yeah. So we we play like maybe once, yeah, twice yeah. a year. Okay. Um, but I'll I'll let you guys know. New song, here, uh, new music. Yeah. When we first were making songs, like in the, there was a, a for our our All for You album, like two thousand three. There was a time where I was in the studio all the time, just like I still am in the studio all the time. <laughs> but every day would be a new song, and then we, and then I'd produce it as well. And the next day, and I just kind of would would challenge myself to do that. So during that season, there was like, and then my cousin as well, Brada Garza. He's the one who wrote a lot of the the hits that we also have too. But he had some songs too, and then we ended up like recording a lot of that. And there's like maybe fifty songs in the vault, unreleased. Unreleased. Oh. That nobody knows. <laughs> and so we, when we were playing the last time, we're like, guys, I think this might be the year that we we revamp and like. You know how stoked people would be, <laughs> even if it's like a one random song, you know. Yeah. So I just I gotta get you know the logistics of that and um, make sure our schedule matches that. Mm. But definitely loved this these last few years of playing mm -hmm. our gigs. And like, man, people are still like. Rocking in the music. Timeless. Yeah. Timeless. And we're still playing at these like festivals that they're mm -hmm. asking us. But other than that, we're not we're not gigging. <laughs> like mm -hmm. and even when even when we left, it was like very amicable. We we finished um on our sixth album. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's just time where I'm gonna I kinda stepped into the Zaya music, the studio side a little bit more. Um got married. My wife and I, we had a little band, we did a little tour, four albums, like it was like a month long. So it was really cool. Like I, I dabbled in different kind of music venues, and mm -hmm. yeah, I just I just love where I am right now. I feel, awesome. I feel like there's like who's the next person. Mm -hmm. Like there's just so many great musicians, mm -hmm. and I love the culture of Hawaii. And I don't want to leave, and I want to be here for the next musician who's coming up. And if I'm still old, I still want to be relevant. <laughs> if not, then one of my kids will be, will be there ready to go. Yeah. And to take care of, uh, take care of you and your projects. All oh, right on. Well, I'm super excited to see what else you do. So maybe this year there might okay. be some OP picker um, announcements. Okay. And if not, I'm sure you're going to have your hands in I'm a lot of projects that. all the time. I see your name in yeah. all these little music things. Okay, I just have my last Fast Fave 5 questions. These are just okay. rapid fire answers. All right, so favorite late night snack? And is is this different than your studio snacks? Mint chocolate chip, Baskin Robbins. Ooh, ice cream, nice. 
Favorite TV show or movie? Oh, oh Office. Oh, oh, I guess movie now. Uh, movie. Meet the parents. Meet the parents. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, nice. Yeah. So I've got a comment. Uh, that's going to be my favorite. I haven't heard that one in a while. Yeah, or seen that one in a while, yeah. Or Nacho Libre. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Nacho. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, there's so many lines for that, <laughs> that movie John, John, too. the bar some sweets. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in science. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in science. <laughs> and then I love the scene where he's on the wall, and then the like, and then he clenches his butt. <laughs> and then the song, oh, yeah. when the fantasy has ended. Do you remember that one at the end? Yeah. It's like, it's I, I wipe my face, I wipe Wait, what my was tears. It? My head... Uh, Something on grass, yeah. Something that rides on grass. Do I use my hands? Yeah, so funny. Don't you know I've had diarrhea since Easter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, great, great movie. Okay, uh, favorite book. Favorite book. Right now, I'm reading one called um, Teens with Boundaries. So I'm going to say that's currently besides the Bible, but. Mm -hmm. Teens That's with boundaries. Teens with boundaries. <laughs> Sounds like a, a dad a book. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning uh, parenting tips right now. <laughs> All right. Favorite travel destination? I love Big Island. Big Island is like hey. our spot because we have a lot of yeah. Lahana there. Nice. Uh, anywhere specific? Hilo, Kona? Oh, we Amakua, have so many families Kona. all over, but... There is a place in Volcano where our friends are at right now and they, they have a farm and that's like our, oh, that's that's cool. our place of, of like solitude. Just getaway, definitely. yeah. We love it over there. Awesome. It's a volcano side. Cool. But my wife's from um, Poa. Yeah, yeah. The um, Puna. Yeah. My parents had mentioned the, the Cruz Ohana before and yeah. that they're up there. Do they have a studio up there? Um, there there might be a, uh, there's a couple of studios mm -hmm. um, yeah, that I know personally. Okay. Maybe two. Cool, cool. Last one. Favorite thing to do to recharge? Favorite thing? Oh, I, I really love movies <laughs> no, like going I don't, to I don't the get movies to watch, i don't get to watch a lot of movies honestly because my schedule's so busy mm -hmm. but i love when i can just like go to the movies yeah and like the theater popcorn theater, everything popcorn, icy. Crunch. yeah yeah that's yeah. how i used to work at so a that's movie a theater. nice recharge for me mm. um but i but i don't like to go solo yeah, like yeah. I, so maybe a recharge is like i just like driving i don't mind traffic honestly because i get to listen to a lot of what i'm doing in the studio nice i yeah. just like um kind of see how i can make it better but yeah, I, reach, I, I think taking trips with families, mm -hmm. um, we're kind of overdue, but we are going to do one for my, my son's birthday come, okay. coming up. So cool. Yeah. Anytime I see those on the calendar, and, <laughs> yeah, like, okay, that's yeah. a time to recharge. <laughs> nice. I love the movie stuff. I, there's something special about like the movie popcorn. The AC, the even like falling asleep and then waking back seeing up. Seeing the like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I See, I, I can't go to late movies anymore because oh, yeah. I always fall asleep. And it, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's just like, if it starts at nine, yeah. I'm going to get out at like 11 or if it's an Avenger movie, I'm going to get out at 12, yeah. midnight. Uh, I just can't. Yeah, but I, I love the... We're going to go soon because there's this one anime called Demon Slayer. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, they're showing the first episode of the season in the, the movie theater. Wow. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. But to me, there hasn't been any like real awesome movies compared to when I was growing up. Like, can't wait to see. Like, as far as the stir of it. Yeah, Hangover, just, remember Hangover? Oh, that was yeah. a good one. Maybe because it's so like accessible now, movies than when it was yeah. before. But yeah, even just being at home with my dogs and mm -hmm. animals, and we have a lot of animals. <laughs> All in that our house. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that movie Dune? It's no. based off a book. No. Oh, okay, that was a cool one. D U N E. D U N E. Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing the like the the Timothy Chalamet like, like is in that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the, yeah. the new one's coming out soon. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's the sequel. I gotta yeah. watch that one then. Yeah, but uh, that's pretty much all we got for you today. I just want to say mahalo for coming and blessing our studio with your talent, your presence, your mana'o. It was awesome. Do you have mahalo. anything you want to share before we wrap up? If not, tell us where we can find you. Um, no, you can just find me on imuagarza.com or my record label is zeomusic.com. Um, you'll probably see me all around. I play with Kimye and um, Kolo Hikai sometimes. And I do random gigs here and there, but really I'm like the guy behind the scenes that's like putting them on my shoulders and lifting mm -hmm. them up. So um, I also go to C4 Church. And if you go to, um, yeah, the website, you'll have more information if you ever want to book me for a gig or come to the studio, check it out. 
but yeah, would love to one day meet you, whoever you're, <laughs> if you're watching. Yes. Mahalo nui and yesupu me oko. Right on. Well, mahalo imo for joining us on the Keep It Law podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka. Remember to always keep it aloha. Keep it aloha. Yo. Awesome. Mahalo. Kamaka. Mahalo. <laughs>